From Aloha Stadium, K-5, the home team presents University of Hawaii Warrior Football. After early season setbacks to national powers Alabama and Boise State, the Warriors return home looking to get back to even with a non-conference matchup against the Panthers of Eastern Illinois. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to live coverage of University of Hawaii football. When you look at these two teams tonight, one is a one double-A team, and they come in as the underdog, and that is Eastern Illinois. This is their third trip to Aloha Stadium. In 1999, the first year of the tenure of June Jones, they lost a close game here, 31 to 27, and then in 2002, they were blitzed 61 to 36. So here they are again. Let me welcome Jim Donovan to the television broadcast. Jim, a former University of Hawaii player and now executive director of the Hawaii Bowl. When you look at this team, Eastern Illinois, they're a team that on their level, one double A, very competitive, but tonight they're the underdogs. That's correct, Jim. They bring a two and two team in here. They've got a proud program, uh, six times making the division one double A playoffs in the last 11 years. They're led by number 10, Mike Donato, quarterback. He has 160 yards and throwing on average per game, but they run a spread offense. They like to hand the ball off a lot. Look to him to hand off to number 29, Vincent Webb. He's a 4-5 speedy running back, and he averages about 140 yards a game. When he's got to throw it, though, look for him to throw to Michael Rucker, number 80. He's got six TDs so far this season, and he's got 99 yards a game in reception. The bottom line, though, is if you look at the Saragon rating system, Hawaii's rated number 60. Eastern Illinois Panthers 161. If you do the math, they should be about a 25-point underdog tonight. So they're going to have to do everything perfect to be in this game. As far as Hawaii is concerned, and I welcome in uh, Russ Yamanoha, as far as Hawaii is concerned, the talent is there. I mean, everyone that looks at this team says, this is the best team that the University of Hawaii has had since June Jones has been here. And yet, Russ, they come into this game one and two. And when you look at this game on the schedule, when the uh, schedule came out, you have to figure that Eastern Illinois was going to be one of those kind of get fat games for the University of Hawaii. But as you said, Hawaii below the Mendoza line at one and two on the season. And Eastern Illinois, they can play some football. They're ranked 20th in Division One AA. And uh, they've had some accolades on their level. Their job is to come out tonight and try to prove it against a 1A team. They've already taken on one Division One A team this year in Illinois out of the Big Ten. That was a loss for Eastern Illinois. But the Eastern Illinois definitely has the uh, players and the, the stature to put up a fight against Hawaii tonight. So Hawaii comes in and they have, of course, Colt Brennan. And Colt Brennan has been superb in the games that have been played this year. And he hopes for a big one tonight. When we come back, we'll kick it off. Eastern Illinois and Hawaii. This exclusive sports presentation of the home team is sponsored by Hawaiian Telecom. From local to long distance, wireless to internet, Hawaiian Telecom has solutions for all of your communication needs. Hawaiian Telecom, keeping Hawaii connected. It slices it does. These days, you never know what will show up at your door. Surprise! But Pizza Hut is always welcome with pizza, pasta, and salads delivered hot and fresh. Got a hungry family? Dig into two large two-topping pizzas on the crust of your choice for just $22.99. Pizza Hut, delivering more to your door. Hey, is your daughter home? Football. There's nothing like being there. Oceanic Time Warner Cable presents the Warriors against the Nevada Wolfpack, Saturday, October 7th at 6 o'clock. Print your tickets online at HawaiiAthletics.com. Warrior Football at Aloha Stadium. There's nothing like being there. This week, America's Made Heroes. The new must-see experience. Just ask one of the 25 million who saw it. Yes, Ordinary people. We are all connected. Discovering extraordinary abilities. Tell me what happened, Nathan. We both flew. Catch the show everyone's raving about. This is the beginning. Heroes, Monday, 9, 8 central. Get caught up with a two-minute replay at NBC.com. Let's take a look at Jim Donovan's Keys to the Game, sponsored by... Kaiser Permanente, drive. Oh, 
Eastern Illinois Panthers have to establish a run tonight, Jim. Uh, they they need to get Vincent Webb. He had a 200-yard-plus game last week against Sanford. They need that same kind of game from him again. That'll help keep the Warriors off the field. Their offense, their very prolific offense off the field. For the University of Hawaii, it's a tall order in the passing game. The receiving unit for Eastern Illinois it's a tall bunch. Michael Rucker goes 6'6". Six, six. Ryan Voss goes 6'5". Six, Adam Parcel, the tight end, he goes 6'4". So the uh, defensive backs with the University of Hawaii uh, have to be on their game tonight because they're going to be facing some tall receivers. Eastern Illinois likes to run it, but they can't put all their eggs in one basket. The Hawaii defense can't because uh, these uh, receivers for Eastern Illinois, if they get into open space, they can do things with the football. So both teams are on the field. And we'll have the uh, flip of the coin. But first, this injury report is sponsored by HMSA, working for a healthier Hawaii. Eastern Illinois coach Bob Spoo, he had that surgery on the 29th of August, and he has not returned. He is not expected to return for at least another three to five weeks. Clint Sellers had a shoulder injury. He was one of their main players. And he is out for how long, they don't know. And for Hawaii, Ryan Grice Mullins and Reagan Mauia. Mauia announced just tonight he will not play. And uh, that is because of a shoulder injury. You were looking at June Jones in his eighth year, 54 and 39. And here at Aloha Stadium, he is 42 and 19. Hawaii will receive following the toss of the coin. And Eastern Illinois now coached by assistant head coach and offensive coordinator Mark Hudson in his fourth year. Hudson went to the University of Oklahoma, All-America honors there, and then a brief career in the National Football League with the Detroit Lions. So we're just about ready to get underway here at Aloha Stadium. We welcome you to our broadcast tonight. The weather appears to be okay. Some clouds and moisture up over the Ko'olaus, but they have not advanced down into Halava Valley. Tonight's starting lineups are sponsored by Enjoy Snacks. It's time to enjoy life, and we'll get to them as soon as the opening kickoff takes place. So Hawaii will have Chad Mock back along with Ross Dickerson. Mock number 88 and Dickerson number 82. Kicking off will be Tyler Wilkie. Wilkie, one of the kickers on this Eastern Illinois team, but he only kicks off. Hawaii begins tonight one and two on the year. Loss at Alabama, a win, UNLV at home, a loss on the road last week to Boise State. And Eastern Illinois two and two, a loss to Illinois, they beat Indiana State, they lost to Illinois State. Last week they beat Samford in Alabama. Very short kick, and it's grabbed just inside the 30-yard line by one of the upmen for Hawaii. And we'll take a look, it is Desmond Thomas for Hawaii. Seymour Loftman was left to make the stop. Hawaii will have first down and uh, Hawaii will have a first and 10. They'll put it at the 31 yard line. Colt Brennan 79 for 115 1034 yards nine touchdowns and four interceptions. First down he could have a big night tonight. Bremen with time, throws crossing pattern, Bess in the open at the 35, breaks a tackle, gets to the 36-yard line. That'll bring up second down and four. Tristan Birds there to make the stop. Birds the leading tackler. So it will be second down. Here you see the you see the starting lineup for the University of Hawaii. And Ilawa in the backfield for the University of Hawaii comes in here. And he has uh, run very, very well. So he also could have a big night statistically. Brennan to throw again. Already one for one. Throws. That is complete to Sample. Ian Sample out to the 45-yard line. And that is the first down. Matt Restrick there to make the stop for Eastern Illinois. The starting lineup for Eastern Illinois 
If you take a look at uh, Burge in that defensive uh, secondary, Burge is the one that, that really puts the pressure on on that secondary, but Thomas and Walters are the two big producers. Thomas leads the tackling, and Walters leads in sacks. Another quick pass, but this one is dropped. That went off Ross Dickerson. Dickerson starting to look upfield before the ball was captured. Lucius Seymour there, the linebacker on the left side, made the tackle for Eastern Illinois. Hawaii, of course, would like to establish things early. That'll bring up second down and 10 from their own 45-yard line just underway here at Aloha Stadium. Rivers is to the far side. And Sample to the near side. Bremen in that shotgun again, short shotgun. Bremen throws, that is complete to Ross Dickerson. And Dickerson is finally muscled out of bounds as he crosses the 45 to the 43 yard line of Eastern Illinois. 12 yard gain and a first down. Well, the Hawaii offense is uh, reminiscent of that UNLV game. Nothing like playing at home against UNLV. Hawaii came out, just moved the ball down the field now tonight against Eastern Illinois. The Panthers are rotating before the snap on defense, but so far it's not thrown off cold Britain at all. Hawaii just moving the football early on. First down from the 43 of Eastern Illinois. Colt Brennan. Throws angle pass incomplete tended for sample. Ian sample. Ben Brown there to make the tackle for Eastern Illinois. Sample with five catches now on the season. Came in with 40 yards. They're playing a three deep, Jim. They're showing a lot of respect to our passing game. Yeah, you see the ball come out. It's two drops early for the University of Hawaii. But uh, so far, drops haven't hurt them. They're still moving the football. Second down and 10 right here. Brennan again. That's complete to Dickerson. Dickerson breaking two tackles, gets inside the 30. Finally, ankle tackled by Donald Thomas. Thomas, 5'10", 237-pound junior, came in with 37 tackles, 18 of them solo, and it had to be solo that time. Gain on the play of 14 and another first down. The free safety, Seymour Lofman, came over to make a play. He didn't do a good job. He got run over, and the result was a big gain after the catch by Dickerson. Triple wide receiver to the left. First down at the 29 yard line of the Panthers. Brennan back to work, throws long for the end zone and overthrow Sample. Sample had at least a step and a half on Ben Brown, but the ball was thrown long. Bring up second down. When, and they, have, 10. when they have three guys deep like that, it's tough to complete a long pass. Uh, that's where you're seeing a lot of the underneath stuff is open across the middle, and that'll probably continue to happen. When I was out of practice this week, I think the Warriors were looking for the two deep, so this is a little bit different than I think they were practicing for. Again, triple wide receiver to the left. Second down and 10. Brennan, short pattern. That's hit into the air and then almost intercepted, almost picked off by B.J. Brown. Ross Dickerson, the intended receiver. That'll bring up third down for Hawaii. Hawaii has not run the ball yet in this opening draw. There you see the carom on the football. And football, of course, the way it's shaped, always has funny bounces. Eight, eight passes and no rushing. That's the June Jones offense. Always wants to have those where he has no rushing plays, and so far, he's holding true. Big third down play here. Third down and 10 from the 29-yard line. Dickerson in motion. Brennan looks over the middle. Now throws. That is complete touchdown sample. 29-yard touchdown pass for Colt Brennan. That's his 10th touchdown of the season. His 44th in his career. And for Sample, he comes up with his first touchdown reception on the year. And Terrence Sanders was a defender on the play, and Sample just ran right by him. Great blitz pickup on the left side there. 
Or Cole Brennan just has the time to stand back in the pocket and sample just made it look way too easy. Just ran inside of his defender. And the result is an easy touchdown for Hawaii. Funaki holding Inoki Funaki. And Dan Kelly drills it. 7 0, 1248 left to play in the first quarter. Opening drive, no problem. Whether you love hunting, going to the range, or just want peace of mind, keep Young Guns in your sights. Come to Young Guns for the best selection of guns, knives, and accessories to keep you on target. Personal protection is something Young Guns takes very seriously. Let our qualified staff show you your options. We sell firearms, knives, pepper spray, and other personal security products. Young Guns staff is professional, knowledgeable, and always there to assist you. Young Guns, Hawaii's best gun and knife shop. Drew Bledsoe's in his 14th year. Sunday night football controversy. If he's not the right guy, the Cowboys have a long road. Bledsoe rolling the win for the touchdown. I think he needed that. This week, an Good NFC down. showdown. Explosive offense collides yeah. with dominant defense. Only one will remain undefeated. Sunday night football. Did you vote in Hawaii's primary election? Every vote counts, and every viewer who watched KHNL News 8 got the best election night coverage. With political experts and party pundits supporting the KHNL News 8 team, you got the most live, local, late-breaking coverage. Plus, KHNL.com kept you on target with live streaming and voting results. Stay with KHNL News 8's Decision 2006 for the most comprehensive coverage leading up to Hawaii's general election. And remember to vote on November 7th. Central Pacific Bank sponsors the Loyalty Award by donating $100 toward the Central Pacific Bank Endowed Scholarship Fund for every touchdown. Hawaii scores Central Pacific Bank, a member of the FDIC, fiercely loyal banking. 69 yards, 9 plays, 2 minutes and 12 seconds, 29 yard touchdown pass from Colt Brennan to Ian Sample. Dan Kelly will kick off. Was kicked off, taken at the five yard line by Ponius. And Ponius gets short of the 15 before he's rolled up by the Darth Vader like defense. Michael Malala, number 20, made contact first, came over the top. What a good opening drive will do for your special teams. They come in, what the wedge break, it goes right up over the top. That's what the crowd reacted to. It came down at the feet of the ball carrier. This Michael Malala went over the top, and that's that's how you break the wedge. First down from the 19. I formation. Donato on a pitch. This is Webb. And Webb gets to the 20. Short game. Solomon Ilamimian making the catch. There was some talk whether he would start. Mike Donato is the quarterback out of Broadview, Illinois. He is rather uh, Donato is 47 of 78 for 645 yards, eight touchdowns, but he has been intercepted six times. Second down and eight from the 20. Donato fakes, looks, chased out of the pocket, and then throws it away. Lila Purcell. Good pressure that time by Hawaii. This is the offense for Eastern Illinois. Webb is the leading rusher, and Rucker is the leading receiver. So those two are the two most productive in the offense for Eastern Illinois. Kessler and Rucker are the wide receivers. Third down and eight from the 21. Ball is given on an end around to Kessler. He's dropped at the 23. Adam Leonard leveled him. Welcome to D1 football. The play just flows to the right. Adam Leonard stayed home, did not buy into all of that misdirection stuff, and he just comes up and lays the lumber. That's just solid football by a solid football player right there in Adam Leonard. 
Zach Yates in the punt for Eastern Illinois. 40.9 average his longest punt this year 57 yards gets away a squibber rolling rolling taken on the 28 yard line and being rolled up is Myron Newberry so Newberry like a shortstop in baseball made the made the reception 47 yard punt and a minus two yard return well this Eastern Illinois team is going to be a world of hurts if they don't come up with some answers quick Hawaii comes out in the first drive just moves it solidly down the field and the first drive for Eastern Illinois is a lightning fast three and out and just like that Cole Brennan and the uh, powerful Hawaii offense back in business nine plays on that first drive all passes first down from the 33 Brennan to throw again Brennan gets away and gets two yards to the 30 yard line almost a sack there. Ian Sample went deep on that play and we have a penalty fly. Pierre Walters in on uh, the tackle number 91 6 5, 261 pound sophomore out of Forest Park Illinois. And he leads this team in sacks. incidental face mask number 90 of the defense five yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat first down. Pretty good protection there. That was pretty much a coverage sack, even though he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage a little bit past it. Michael Torres called for the inadvertent face mask. So still a first down for Hawaii following the penalty. First and three from the 35. Brennan to throw yet another time. Looking throws wide open at the 50 yard line and advancing the ball inside the 45 to the 44 is Jason Rivers and Rivers is coming off a terrific game where he had six catches for 81 yards and three touchdowns against Boise State. That was his 12th reception of the season and Hawaii just keeps on rolling. They have it at the 45 yard line of Eastern Illinois. Donald Thomas was there but when that pass was caught by Rivers. He was lonely, all alone. I mean, it's, it's almost for, for Cole Brennan. It's almost who do you throw to? He had a couple of guys open on that pattern. Brennan again. That is complete to Bess, and Bess able to get out of bounds after he steps the yardage off of the first down. A 12-yard gain and another first down for Hawaii. And this could be, I mean, if Bess is just getting started now and it's all passes, this could be NCAA get fat night. Well, they keep on playing 3D like that, Jim, and the middle and underneath pass is going to be open all night long, and Brennan's just going to tear them apart. First down for Hawaii at the 34 yard line of Eastern Illinois. 7 0 Hawaii. Took them two minutes and 12 seconds. On the first drive to score, there's a pass crossing pattern to Dickerson. 20. Dickerson out of bounds at the 15. Keandre Sams out of Lakeland, Florida, there to make the tackle for Eastern Illinois. Hawaii on the porch again. They're in the red zone. That time, Eastern Illinois only rushing three down linemen. They sent a linebacker as well, but Dickerson just. Matched up with the linebacker, and that's not going to work. Dickerson's going to run away from that guy every time. And right now, the Hawaii offense is just clicking on all cylinders. Hawaii in the red zone, 10 of 13, 77% on the season. All touchdowns. First down from the 15. Brennan, first running play to Ilawa. And Ilawa is swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Walters is there, number 91. Torres, the end on the other side. Tim Kelly, also in the middle for Eastern Illinois. That's her favorite play, Tampa. Favorite running play, I should say. And uh, didn't get anything there. Uh, Eastern Illinois is doing pretty well against a run, but that was only the first time we ran tonight. Loss of one on the play. Second down at 11 from the 16. Brennan to throw. Looks sideline. Checks off. Throws long over the middle. And that is incomplete. There was some 
there was some contact as it appeared the ball was in the air but no fly. Dickerson the attended receiver. Brennan wanted another touchdown. B.J. Brown covering on the play for Eastern Illinois. At that time Dickerson makes contact with the linebacker and uh, no flag thrown on that play but uh, Dickerson was well covered. Easy to see him looking for the flag and that crowd let him hear it now third and long for Hawaii. Third down Hawaii can get the first down just outside the five yard line. Brennan looking again with time now throws for the end zone touchdown. Ross Dickerson 16 yard touchdown pass and for Dickerson. That's his first touchdown reception of the year. And he has gone over 100 yards now in season long yardage. So Bremen, two touchdown passes, 45th of his career, and the 11th of the season. Ball is placed, kicked, and it is good by Dan Kelly. Look at the scoreboard. 8.51 left in the first period. 14 0 Hawaii. Find the job you've always been looking for in the Star Classifieds, where Hawaii's top companies advertise. Working in the food and beverage business for 15 years, I was looking for a change. I opened up the Star Classifieds, saw the ad, and it was the best move there for me. The midweek is a paper I look in all the time and recently heard over the radio of the Star Classified ads. I see us winning out there tonight. You. I do it. We want to win championships. Your boyfriend's a real piece of work. This is life. This isn't Maxim Magazine. I lose a game, we're packing our bags. I believe in you. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Can't lose. Friday Night Lights premieres Tuesday, 8, 7 central on NBC. Hawaii another touchdown drive 72 yards in seven plays two minutes and 13 seconds in elapsed time on that particular drive five passes and two rushes. So so far it's been a frolic for Hawaii they lead 14 to nothing Tony is, is deep along with Sean Campbell for Eastern Kentucky brother Eastern Illinois I should say and uh, kicking off is Kelly. It will go to Ponius. Ponius in trouble, and he gets whacked to the turf again. All week long, Jim, they've been practicing the kickoff as the Banditos, and uh, you can tell they're coming down mighty aggressive. At Suarez, Blaze Suarez. Boy, nothing working for Eastern Illinois right now. They put up a, they put up a five-man blocking pattern right in front of the return man and the Hawaii kick cover unit goes right through it like a knife through butter and makes a play in Eastern Illinois a bad field position to start the drive Suarez out of Kaneohe and Castle High School big hit here's Webb short game Mel Purcell there the defensive starters now for this uh, Hawaii team and the defense has been effective over the course of this season, even though their record is one and two. But it is Purcell and also Ikaka Alama Francis, the defensive ends, along with Peters. Peters, the leading tackler. But those two, Purcell and Alama Francis, funnel the ball carriers back up into the middle where the linebackers can have a, a whack at them. Second down and eight. 
throw. That is, let's see, did he catch it? He did. That was to Rucker. So a good, a good throw that time by Donato, even though he was really under pressure. C.J. Hawthorne covering on the play. Rucker, his 17th reception of the year. That is still short of the first down, and that will be third down and about a half yard. 25 players on this uh, Eastern Illinois team from the state of Florida. They recruited heavily in Florida. Third down, less than a yard. They give it to, to Webb. No. We'll see who that is. Number 22, that is that's a Webb, and Webb all the way down inside the 10. There was nobody in the secondary, and Webb was all by himself. 69-yard run. They were in short yardage defense, very similar to goal line defense. And if you can pop through there and get into the secondary, you can get a big game, and that's a gain, and that's exactly what Webb did. The Eastern Illinois put two extra tackles in the game to play tight end. And Webb just gets through and gives uh, credit to Kenny Patton for not giving up on the play, stays with it, and now Hall has a chance to come up with a stop. First down now at the 10 yard line for Eastern Illinois. Webb stepped into the secondary and he was by himself. High formation. Donato audibleizing. Up the middle. Touchdown. And carrying the ball that time was Norris Smith. And Smith's second touchdown of the year. And all of a sudden, they have found something right there in that crease. And they have taken advantage of it and have come roaring back in this game. It's a smash mouth football right there. Nobody touches him until it gets just short of the, just before the goal line. And that's, uh, give credit to Eastern Illinois. Nothing was going right for him. And all of a sudden, they make some adjustments. They come right back, close to within seven, pending the extra point. Yates kicks it and it is not good 14 for Hawaii six for Eastern Illinois Media. Smith with Time the scoring out. run but the 69 yard electric one Wet. hey Phil your idea is not working <laughs> your niece has to go you said you wanted a little afternoon pick me up go Jack go and I delivered I was thinking more of a treat, like my real ice cream shakes. But let's add creamy whipped topping and a cherry. That'll beat the afternoon slump. No, 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 no! Leave. our high-speed internet today and get online for only $9.99 a month for the first three months. It's the best value in town. To connect, call 643-0805. Your grandma could read it in the paper. Tomorrow, your uncle might hear it on the radio. The next morning, driving to work, your neighbor may see it tonight on TV. If he watches the right channel, you already know the news. You saw it on KHNL.com, and you got breaking news on KHNL News 8. Live, local, late breaking, first online, first on the go. News when you need it, right now. KHNL News 8. Eastern Illinois, a shocker. 87 yards in four plays. Smith, the nine-yard touchdown run. That's Nora Smith. But... Vincent Webb, the 69 yarder, and they both went over the left side of the line or the right side of the University of Hawaii line. Ross Dickerson and Chad Mock again deep for Hawaii. Tyler Wilkie will kick off for Eastern Illinois. It's now 14 to 6. Coming up and taking it is Dickerson. Dickerson is hit. Hit again, finally, succumbs to the pressure at the 25-yard line. So Hawaii has to go to work there. But credit, credit Eastern Illinois. I mean, they were blitzed twice on drives. Touchdown passes for touchdowns, of course. And 
but when you are behind 14 to nothing you have to adjust and that's exactly what they did those touchdown passes came very quickly. So here comes Hawaii again Colt Brennan. Ready to go to work ball at the 25. Still running, he finally gets to the 28 yard line, gain of three. Lucius Seymour there to finally make the stop. Good coverage that time by Eastern Illinois. Panthers went to two deep coverage, uh, got tired of giving up those medium and short passes, and uh, that might have been a slight adjustment for Colt. Second down and seven. Brennan again. That's caught at midfield. All the way to the 44 yard line of Eastern Illinois, Jason Rivers. Rivers, all of a sudden, after quite frankly underachieving in the first two games of the season, came on last week against Boise State. And he has really become a deep threat now. 28 yard gain on a first down. Tristan Burge there to make the tackle for Eastern Illinois. Burge out of Romeoville, Illinois. And it is first down from the 44 yard line for Hawaii. Brennan dancing, looking, pump faking, now throws. Incomplete. He wanted Bess. And Brennan took a lick. Michael Torres. And Tim Kelly, good pressure. Ian Sample came across the middle. He was open momentarily, but because Eastern Illinois had good pressure on Cole Brennan, forcing him to run out of the pocket, he wasn't able to pull the trigger and hit Sample, tried to go to Bess, uh, making the best out of a bad situation, but the play did not materialize, and Hawaii comes up now with a second and 10. Ball at the 44. You look at Colt Brennan. Sack. Came off of Hawaii's right side. Just got there as he was setting up. And you see more Lofman. The Panthers come up with 10 guys in the box this time. They had one safety back. If Gold Brennan had gotten rid of that thing, that one safety would have been a world of hurt. But they put 10 guys in the box, uh, 10 guys in the line of scrimmage, I should say, and they come up with the sack. That's oh. the eighth sack of the year on Colt Brennan. A little bit of a delayed blitz there. Let the linemen pick up the front guys and uh, came through the B gap and the outside gap to get them. Brennan again steps up in the pocket, looking. Now throws. Crossing pattern. That's complete the sample. Sample inside the 25 to the 22. Another big play and a first down. Burge finally made the tackle. And a good puck by Jason Rivers. That was third and 20. Kind of ridiculous to say it, but that's when Hawaii is dangerous on third and long. At that time, Ross Dickerson was open, but he elects to go to Sample. That's Colt Brennan. And boy, uh, number 21 for Eastern Illinois, Terrence Sanders. He went after the legs of Sample. Sample put a move on him and picked up yards after the catch. And now Hawaii in business just outside the red zone. First down at the 22. 14 to 6, Hawaii leading. Brennan, shovel pass. Ilawa. 10. Ilawa takes a header after being hit by Tristan Burge. Gain on the play of 13. And away we'll have first and goal at the nine. Look at the escort he had. And Burge able to penetrate and make the tackle. Good solo tackle by Burge of Eastern Illinois. And if you're going to go after Nate Alawa, that's the place to go. Nate Alawa packs a punch, 5'9, 255. You got to go low on him or he's going to run you over. 251 left in the first period. 
Brennan looking end zone. Now throws short to the five yard line. And that is complete. And that's Ian Sample. Lucius Seymour there to make the tackle for Eastern Illinois. Hawaii getting closer and closer. Look for the Panthers maybe to move to man to man coverage here when you've got a short field 14 yards to the end line. Uh, they can man up. Rivers is wide to the left. Then Dickerson then Bess. Ilawa back with Brennan. Brennan shovel pass Ilawa touchdown. Well, that's going to be disheartening for this Panther defense. Make a couple of good defensive plays, put Hawaii in third and 20, then they give up the first down, and then the Hawaii offense just takes it from there. Nate Alawa taking it in, making it look way easier. So Kelly drawing for the point after. And that kick is good. So that is the third rushing touchdown of the season for Ilawa. So Ilawa now has come in and is over 200 yards in rushing. As far as the season is concerned, Inoki Funaki is the new holder. And so far he has been flawless. He has been busy tonight, that's for sure. From local to long distance wireless to internet, Hawaiian Telecom. As solutions for all of your communications needs, Hawaiian Telecom keeping Hawaii connected. Nate Ilawa. He has had potential and injury and potential and injury, but when he is healthy, he is a delight. So it is now 21 to 6. Hawaii leading over Eastern Illinois. We'll see whether Eastern Illinois explores the right side of that Hawaii defensive line again. 75 yards in eight plays, four minutes, 28 seconds in elapsed time. 2.03 left to play in the first quarter. Ball is given on a handoff over to the far side to Kessler. And Kessler, as they tried a gadget play on the kickoff, Kessler able to turn the corner, get to the 20-yard line. Yeah, the Hawaii, uh, Hawaii Special Teams unit came down in a couple of kick returns and laid the lumber on the Eastern Illinois returners. So that time they come up with some trickery racing to try to free up some space. Worked for a little bit as they get outside the 20. So they'll put it at the 21. Mike Donato, one for two in the game for only seven yards. Dave Campione has come into the game. And Norris Smith in the backfield in the I formation. Ball is given to Smith. And Smith to the 23. Michael Lafaele and Ikaka Alama Francis there to make the tackle after a very short game from the 21 to the 23. Second down and eight for Eastern Illinois. Coming up on the last minute of play in the the first quarter. Donato again with the eye formation. Now they shift out of the eye. Donato with the fake and then the pass and that's why intended for Campione out of the backfield. And the pass was thrown wide covering on the play was Jacob Patek number 31 for Hawaii. So a big third down play last time that Eastern Illinois had a third down play 69 yard run by Webb. Single setback triple wide receiver. Donato with a passing formation here and he will throw. Now lays it off. And out to the 30 yard line very close to the first down. Nicely executed middle screen. Don't know if it was quite enough. And that's Vincent Webb. That's very close to the first down. In fact, it is a first down. Eastern Illinois trying to mix it up, going with the no huddle right here. And the running game was working, but they can't get off the line of scrimmage. So 
just give it to Webb, just pass the line of scrimmage, and it, the result is a first down just barely. As Eastern Illinois makes some adjustments to his Hawaii defense. Overload the right side this time. First down from the 31. Donata to Webb. Webb squirts away from one attempt on him by Purcell and is able to advance to the 34 yard line. Gain on the play of three, and that will be the final play of the first quarter. Hawaii opens up strong. They go to a 14 to nothing lead. Eastern Illinois comes back with big runs, scores a touchdown, but not the PAT. Hawaii answers back. It's 21 to six. isn't too bad. It's my son. He's just learning how to drive. Here's your repair check, sir. Wow, that was fast. Whoa, whoa, break, break. Oh, instant claim settlement. Discover the AIG advantage. Get your free auto insurance quote today. Probably going to see you guys again real soon. <laughs> Next Entertainment Tonight, Anna Nicole new details on her bizarre Bahama I do's before burying her son. We're on the ground for the latest developments in the story that changes every moment. Then our CSI Miami Beach exclusive. Miami never looked so good. Plus a Grey's Anatomy star. And I'm going to gloriously An E.T. flashback to when she was. I'm afraid of gaining weight. And Oprah's fan surprise. Next E.T. Monday night at 6.30 on KHNL, NBC8. NBC Monday, America's new night for great television, starting with an all-new episode of Deal or No Deal. <laughs> then, it's the new sensation heroes, ordinary people discovering extraordinary abilities. We are all connected. And on the critically acclaimed Studio 60, when the lights go out, the real trouble begins. What are you staring at? My mugshot. All-new Deal or No Deal, followed by Heroes and Studio 60. What a Monday on NBC. The Jack Fact is sponsored by Jack in the Box, where they don't make it until you order it. Eastern Illinois alumni Mike Shanahan of the Broncos, Sean Payton of the Saints, and Brad Childress of the Vikings. In fact, Shanahan was there in 74, Payton in 87, and Childress in 88 at Eastern Illinois. Those three coaches have combined seven and two so far in the National Football League. San Diego State and USC also with the three members of their alumni as head coaches in the National Football League. So Eastern Illinois, it's a pretty good company right there. Second down and three. And carrying the ball, or the second down and seven, I should say, carrying the ball is uh, Webb. Webb lunging forward. Jacob Patek able to halt his progress as we start the second quarter. Jim, you mentioned Bob Spoo is out, the head coach of uh, Eastern Illinois because of a surgery. Mark Hudson, the offensive coordinator, takes over. It's got to be good news for him. He doesn't have to go through the head coaches. Goes up and changes the offense. Right now, the uh, Eastern Illinois offense coming with a no huddle to keep Hawaii off balance. First down from the 41 for Eastern Illinois. Donato the throw with time throws long he wants Rucker that's intercepted by Peters or is it Peters dropped the ball pick it up again he's still running with it and we'll see where they we'll see how they call this now Eastern Illinois thought the ball was out of bounds we do have a penalty flag on the play it could be on Hawaii this gets very confusing here Number 73 of the offense. The penalty is declined. First down. So Hawaii will keep it. It's not on Hawaii. As you can see, did he step out of bounds? The ball is free. And I, I think he tried to lateral the ball. But they're going to give him and Hawaii possession on the 38-yard line. You're right, Jim. He tried to lateral the ball. He had possession and uh, then went back and recovered his own lateral. And it could have been an illegal touching because he came from out of bounds, his first one to touch the ball, but no review. Hawaii gets the ball first and ten. There's no review. That's great. <laughs> ah! 
Brennan to throw. Brennan throws as he's going down, gets it to Dickerson at the 40. Dickerson carries the ball to the 44 yard line. Nice job of making something happen. But Colt Brennan, this is just a Brett Favre kind of play. He's going down, he's in the grass. I don't know if his knee came in contact with the ground. We'll see it right here, but look at the uh, the presence of mind to get rid of it. No, his knee was not down. And boy, anyway, anyway it works. Cole Brennan getting it done. Brennan is 15 for 21, 223 yards, three touchdowns, <laughs> three touchdowns. A shovel pass to Ilawa counted as a. Touchdown reception and pass. Here's Bess crossing midfield to the 49 yard line. DJ Brown again making the tackle for Eastern Illinois. Another first down for the Warriors. They're doing very well moving the ball, especially in those short and medium yard passes. Last week, Brennan. 388 yards in passing and five touchdowns in a losing effort against Boise State. Brennan again. This one is tipped. And incomplete. Tim Kelly got his hand up. Kelly, the defensive tackle for Eastern Illinois. Pass is intended for Ross Dickerson. That makes it second down. And 10 from the 49 yard line. That time Kelly just kind of boosted the outside in the stunts and just got his big paw up there. And they, that's what they teach you. If you can't get to the quarterback, put your hands up. Kelly's doing a nice job of knocking that one down. Hawaii with a second and 10 now. Brennan again. Brennan, that ball slapped right back at him. And now they say incomplete. Trying to set up the screen there, and uh, the guys got so th through so fast that uh, they were able to tip the ball right back to Colt. And it's sort of lucky he didn't catch it. He would have been swamped. Yeah, if he, if he uh, intended to knock this ball down, that's just a heads-up play by Colt Brennan to turn it into an incomplete pass. You're not going to see it right there, but uh, if he did uh, intend to not catch it, it's a pretty good heads-up play by Colt Brennan. You have to sell the screenplay, but you don't sell it right away. And the defense showed up on his doorstep instantly. Third down and 10 from the 49. Big play here. Brennan throws, sideline. That's complete. Angling, angling, trying for the first down, but no. Turned the wrong way. Turned back toward the pressure. Ian Sample with the reception. That'll bring up fourth down. Does Hawaii punt or do they go for it? Jim, I think this is four down territory right here. I mean, if it goes out of the end zone, you're picking up only around 23 yards, and it looks like they are going to go for it. So it is fourth down. Fourth down conversions this year, Hawaii only 17%. They are only one for six on the season. Brennan, four man pattern. Checks, now throws, incomplete. Hawaii turns it over on downs. Brennan tried to find Sample and threw behind him on a crossing pattern. So Eastern Illinois put a gold star on the defense. They're able to stop this uh, Hawaii offense, which already has passed for 236 yards. You can see Hawaii head coach June Jones doing some tweaking there as Cole comes off the field. So giving him an earful so the offense has some success so far in the early going but he's still coaching them up here's Webb into that secondary again Webb inside the 40 to the 39 yard line Leonard Peters saved the touchdown 17 yard game Vincent Webb once he gets into that secondary he causes huge problems they're going no huddle the Panthers are going without a huddle. They're trying to speed up the game, catch the Warriors off balance. Norris Smith has taken over for Webb. Single setback. First down at the uh, Warrior 40 yard line and coming across one of the defensive linemen. It could have been uh, Lawrence Wilson, number 99, and we'll see what the call is. Donato 
thought it was so blatant he took a knee. Offside with contact. Number 99 defense. Five yard penalty. First down. So the first down. It is now a first and five from the 35 yard line. The referee tonight, Robert Cameron. First and five for Eastern Illinois. Donato looking to the sideline and then audibleizing at the line of scrimmage. Rucker and Mobley are split wide to the right. This is Smith. Smith gets juggled as he gets inside the 35 to about the 33. Solomon Illumimian halted his progress there. Hawaii fans glad to welcome Illumimian back from a knee injury. He's out of Los Angeles. Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles had seven tackles in that Alabama game. That'll bring up second down and three for EIU. Rucker in motion. Ball is given up the middle to Norris Smith. Smith very close to the first down. Michael Lafaele there, number 67. Webb, six carries in the game so far. And 100 yards. Campion and Smith in the I formation. The motion is Parcel, the tight end. Ball is given to Smith, first down and much more. And so Eastern Illinois running that very quick attack. Leonard Peters and Jacob Patek double team them. You got to give this Eastern Illinois team some credit because they've made wholesale changes. As Jim mentioned, they're going with the no huddle. They found a play that works, and they found a side of the uh, Hawaii defense that works, and they're just uh, exploiting that, and they're not throwing in the towel by any stretch. 9:28 left to play in the first half. Hawaii leading. Webb on the pitch. Webb swallowed up. Could not get around the corner. Hawaii defense able to hold up the interference, and Webb could not work his magic. Carl Noah there to make the tackle. Great job stretching that out to the sideline, gang tackling. He had nowhere to go. Webb had nowhere to run. Second down. And 12. Ball at the 26. D'Amato again without the huddle. Audibleizing. Webb, the single setback. D'Amato, three man pattern, throws. Throws it high. Was intended for Jermaine Mobley. CJ Hawthorne covering on the play for Hawaii. That'll bring up third down and 12 for Eastern Illinois. The Warriors making an adjustment there, putting eight men in the box. Uh, that's that's what you do when you want to stop the running game, and you sort of dare them to pass. And the Panthers tried it. Again, without the huddle, big third down play here for the Panthers. Donato rolling. Now throws on the run. That is incomplete. It was intended. For number three, Jermaine Mobley out of Deerfield Beach, Florida. And that will bring up fourth down. Michael Foy recognizes excellence on the field of play as you take a look at Donato. Tonight will be selected a member from each team as the game's most valuable player, sponsored by Michael Foy. Well, those are the kind of plays that you have to make if you're a one double A squad coming halfway across the country and halfway across the Pacific to play a football game. You got to come up with those. This is Yates, four for four in field goals. He has a field goal in his last nine games. Ball is placed, it is kicked, it is on its way, and it is good. He is now five for five in field goals. And three more points added, 21 to nine in favor of Hawaii. Prepare to enter the atmosphere. Can we have parachute online? Now, if there is life, the Dutch will find it. What is 
he doing? What is that? Now we wait. It's nice giving our business customers something to talk about. You can call it buzz, a recommendation, or word of mouth. By helping their businesses grow and making things happen with the right products and services, the word's getting around. One business customer leads to another at American Savings Bank. supporting UH Athletics. Get the good life. Great price savings this weekend. Monday morning on Kitchen on News 8. Halloween is still a month away, but it's never too early to start planning your spectacular celebration. It doesn't have to put a hole in your wallet. We'll have details on how you can have Halloween fun on a budget. See you Monday morning right here from 5 to 7. See you then. You're watching K5, the home team. Gets you chicks. Island Candies or click on BigIslandCandies.com to order your favorite treats. New items are now available. Big Island Candies, home of the famous diagonally dipped shortbread cookies. Ross Dickerson and Malcolm Lane deep for Hawaii to receive the kickoff. 43 yard field goal by Yates. Zach Yates, 21 to 9. Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois, 13 rushes now, 123 yards. Tyler Wilkie will kick off for Eastern Illinois. And that goes over Dickerson's head, grabs it in the end zone. He's going to return it. He's at the 15 and gets out to the 21. So Dickerson, a courageous move, going back over his shoulder, grabbing the ball in the end zone and then returning it. Adeniji, Adamola Adeniji out of Springfield, Illinois. Only at 5'7 on the special teams made the tackle Dickerson, for the Panthers. Dickerson made contact right before the ball went into the end zone. Sadie had to run it out and did get out right back to where it would have been a touchback right to the 20-yard line. Chad Mock is now a wide receiver flanked to the right. Brennan back to work again. Throws sideline pattern. That is complete to Jason Rivers. And Rivers is hit as goes out of bounds. And that will be a personal foul. James Larson, I believe, was guilty of that. So a personal foul will be called the number 59. Tremendous amount of respect for the Warrior receivers from these uh, Pan Eastern Illinois Panthers. They're giving them a very good cushion. They were in a three deep, and there must have been five yards separating those two when he caught the ball. So the ball is moved up to the 43 yard line, and that will be a first down. As you see, Larson called for the personal foul. Larson, 6'2, 217 pound sophomore from Mundeling. Alamore. First down, Brennan. Triple wide receiver to the right side. Brennan now throws. That is complete. With it is Bess. Bess trying to gain yardage, and he does. All the way to the 49 yard line. Bess in yards after catches. Really right up there among the nation's leaders. Once he catches the ball, it is not over. That's just perhaps one half of the equation. Andre Lima, a defensive lineman, 6'4", 300 pounds. He's out there helping back up the uh, pass defense of the uh, Eastern Illinois defense, hustling. Second down and about four and a half. Ball at the 49-yard line. Brennan steps up in the pocket. Now throws, dropped by Bess. Boy, that's something you don't see. The thing is so impressive as you're watching Colt Brennan how much he's improved from last year. I mean, he's working through each one of those progressions. You can actually see his head snap as he moves from receiver to receiver. He's a lot more patient, and that's one of the reasons why they're having a lot more success. And no, you don't see Devin drop the ball very often. Third 
down from the 49 yard line. Brennan. That is complete to Chad Mock. And Mock has the first down inside the 40 yard line to the 38. So that's a 13 yard gain. Lucius Seymour there to make the tackle covering for Eastern Illinois and Hawaii. Moving the ball again. And now Brennan with 263 yards in passing. He is 20 for 30. Yeah. Three yeah. touchdowns. Wow. So there's still seven minutes left to play in the first half. First down at the Eastern Illinois 38. Illinois showing blitz. And there is the screen pass or the little shovel to Ilawa. Ilawa bobbled the ball. Finally, he gained possession of it and was able to move inside the 35 where Michael Torres wrapped him up. You notice they're blitzing from the other side of the field and then they run a screen to the right, to the Warriors' right, and uh, Ilawa just had to wait to catch the ball, which was a good job on his part, but allowed the defense to catch up to him. By contrast, Brennan 268 yards in passing and Donato 15 1 5. Second down. Ball at the 33. Brennan shovel pass. Ilawa. Ilawa's run down from behind by Burge at the 30 yard line. And we have a penalty fly. Could be holding, usually in that area. Could be on Tala Isera. Or Sampson Satelli. Referee Cameron. He's going through his progressions now. <laughs> he's got to figure it out. Maybe, maybe. Holding number 64 offense. 10 yard penalty. Second out. They're going to call it on the center right here, Samson Satelli. He just kind of hung on to Tim Kelly as he came by him. Then give him a couple of shots to the back. It's just football right there. Second down and 15. Ball now at the 43 of Hawaii in Eastern Illinois Territory. Brennan steps up, throws long over the middle. That's caught at the 15, the 10, touchdown. Ian Sample. 43 yards. That was brilliant. Brilliantly thrown. Brilliantly caught. That was a clinic. In stride. Perfect pass. Great job of splitting the two deep defense right there. That's clinic. Just like Jim said, how you do it. You split the two defenders. So Sample with the touchdown. Sample six catches, 122 yards and two touchdowns in this first half. Ball is placed. Ah, bad, either a bad snap or a bad hold, and it's taken by one of the Eastern Illinois players, and he wants to do what Boise State did last year, laterals it off, and finally, it's still loose. And finally, the whistles, the, the whistles finally say that Recess is over. What do you want for lunch, hon? I'll have a deluxe burger. Okay. Is that pastrami? You want pastrami? I'll have that burger, actually. The burger? Pastrami looks good. You want pastrami? Uh, unless you think I should get the burger. Or you can, I mean, or you can eat pastrami. Pastrami burgers. Back at Carl's Jr. Probably try to squib it, and he does. Ball comes loose, and the Bears have to get out of bounds. Rodgers along the sideline. Another one. They're still in deep trouble at midfield. As they get it to Rodgers. They give it back now to the 30. They're down to the 20. All the band is out on the field. He's going to go into the end zone. Will it count? 
most amazing, sensational, dramatic, heart-rending, exciting, thrilling finish in the history of college football. Every weeknight, listen to KHNL News 8 at 6 on 97.5 KHNR-FM. Drive home with KHNL News 8, your live, local, late-breaking news station. Whoever coined the phrase, you hit like a girl. Probably <laughs> wished he could. Don't miss a minute of the action as the Wahine take on the Aggies of Utah State. Friday night at 7 on K5, the home team. Take a look at this pass. I mean, this is brilliantly executed. Bremen over the middle to Sample, and Sample caught that ball, I mean, perfectly. And then a very bad snap by Jake Ingram that time. I mean, it's happening, not, all, not only with Hawaii, it's happening all over the country. Bad snaps, bad De holes. Deja vu all over again. Yes. With that pass to Sample, that was, uh, I believe, 33 passes to one rush so far tonight. Yeah. Excuse me, 32 30. passes to one rush so far tonight. So, yeah, Hawaii is no doubt a passing club. Little squibber. He touched and that it. is, yep, touched at the nine yard line. The ball goes out of bounds. It was touched by Ponius. I think he had to because it was touched by one of the upmen, I believe. Well, if it was touched yeah, by one of the up men, yeah, you could be right, Russ, because the ball did appear to change traje uh, trajectory. And so Ponius back inside the 10 yard line, that's all he could do is try to field it. Ball went out of bounds, unfortunately. First down for Eastern Illinois at their own nine. Donato gives the ball to Webb. To the line of scrimmage, that's all. Great job by the defensive line of Hawaii right there, just shutting it down. That was Francis on the right and Purcell on the left. The two booking defensive ends just came in, by the pressure, and they just kind of said, I'll meet you at the running back. Webb is the tailback. Campion, the fullback. There you see Donato gesticulating. Second down and 10. Webb on the pitch. Webb into the secondary. Gets over the 15 to the 16-yard line. But again, the defense able to spring it out. Lama Francis coming all the way across the field. And Delamimian inside out in that linebacker position to finally end the progress of Webb. And that'll bring up third down and about four. That's the story right there. Hawaii likes to throw it. 311 yards, the minus six rushing, and Eastern Illinois likes to run it. That's varied out by the numbers. Now whistle blows, and we'll see. Could be a timeout. Timeout has been called. 412 left first half. The basic rules of communication have always been simple. Smile. Be honest. Speak from the heart. That's how it was when telephone service came to the islands over 100 years ago. And we believe the same rules apply today. We're your local communications company. Hello? It's Dad! Keeping you connected by providing simple, direct, meaningful choices that best suit your needs. was in his 14th year. Sunday Night Football Controversy. If he's not the right guy, the Cowboys have a long road. Let's go the for the touchdown. I think he needed that. This week, an NFC showdown. Explosive offense collides with dominant defense. 
Only one will remain undefeated. Sunday Night Football. Purchasing UH tickets has never been easier. Buy your individual game tickets online, print them on your home or office computer, transfer them via email. Details at hawaiiathletics.com. Incomplete pass. Amani Purcell in the game number 54. Excellent pressure that time. Pass was intended to Parcel. So Purcell and Parcel involved in that play. Also, Myron Newberry is back deep. Here on fourth down, fourth down and three. Yates waiting for the snap. Line drives it. End over end at midfield. Is it going to touch anybody at the 49 48 yard line? So, hey, we'll have another shot at it. 35 yard punt. Not a good punt at all. Eastern Illinois doing anything they can to try to stay in this ball game. That time they lined up in punt formation, but they had receivers running in motion like they're going to do a pass play, but they got the punt away. So you see the possessions. Away losing it on downs only once. Only one, one time. Look at all those touchdowns. Showing blitz, Eastern Illinois. They do blitz. Quick pattern to best. Could be a big gainer. Now he turns back toward the inside, and that's to where the pursuit was. And Burge was there to finally stop him. Boy, when that play started with the blitz coming up the middle and then the very quick pass. Looked like it would go for excellent yardage. It went for about five. Michael Torres also in on the play. Boy, with an excellent chance to score here. When we played and when I coached, we were always told if you can get the ball inside the 50, when you start the possession, you got a 50% chance of scoring. Second down. And five. The ball at the 46. Same play to the other side. With it is Aaron Bain. And Bain gets inside the 40 yard line. Donald Thomas there to make the stop for Eastern Illinois. So now Bremen has gone over 300 yards in passing in this game. Remember, last week he had 388 yards against Boise State tonight already, and we're in the first half. He has 323. First down from the 39 yard line for Hawaii. Bremen to throw again. Quick pass. This one to Mock. Inside. Clear. Trying to turn the corner at the 20. Chased out of bounds at the 17. Seymour Loftman there. 21 yard game. And Eastern Illinois with the. More than a bust in coverage right there. Only 10 guys on the field on defense. One of their players ran off right before the snap. And you play 11 on 10. That's what's going to happen. Hawaii doing it. Doing the job 11 on 11. It makes it a lot easier when you have one less defender to deal with. First down at the 18 yard line. Bilawa back with Brennan. Three man four man pattern. Brennan throws for the end zone. That's caught. That's a no. The ball comes out. Or does it? Now they say touchdown. Chad Mock. covering on the play. Mock went up and it appeared as if he caught it and then when he fell there appeared to be some question on the possession but he was in the end zone. That's a touchdown for Hawaii. Boy Lofman in perfect position to just lay the lumber but Mock stays with it comes up with a big catch and another touchdown for Hawaii. Let's check the snap this time it's 33 to 9. <laughs> Kelly. What a catch by Mock. Great leaping ability in the end zone for the touchdown. That ball, that ball did not come back 
it did it wasn't pure but it is good it was not pure 34 to 9 Hawaii By seeing you when you're healthy, we can help keep you that way. Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Aloha. I asked Mayor Hanneman to help me with a very important subject. We've seen these roadside memorials all over our island. Underage drinking can result in tragic consequences. When you drink and drive, you can hurt yourself hurt your family, and hurt your friends. The city is planning a number of special events to address underage drinking, and we also have a hotline to report it. In the meantime, be, be smart. smart, don't, don't start. start. It's a new day today. Tell me what's been going on. Want to take every morning and just make it last, make it last, make it last. It's a new day. KHNL News 8 today. Hawaii scoring drive, 51 yards in four plays. Stellar catch in the end zone by Chad Mock. Leaping catch for the touchdown. And Brennan now with 362 yards and five touchdowns. There you see another, I won't call it a bad snap, but it was borderline. There was some juggling going on there. But credit Dan Kelly for Putting it through the uprights, out of the hole. Uh, that time of uh, Funaki. Keomaka on the special team wraps up Ponyo. This is a record night for Colt Brennan. Especially in the first half, 362 yards and five touchdowns. That's a, that is a record. Now we have, we have a new quarterback in the game, Cole Stinson, number 13. He has played sparingly. For Eastern Illinois, Stinson gives the ball to Smith, and Smith is swallowed up as he gets to the 15-yard line. Two minutes remaining to be played in the first half. Adam Leonard is there. Hawaii just overwhelming. Eastern Illinois now 34 to nine, and Brennan having a night to remember. And we are still in the first half. So it, it, it's shaping up as one of those nights where you can say that never have so many come so far for so little. But they're hanging in there as well as they can. Pitch to Smith. Smith runs into the black shirt. Ikaika Lama Francis and Mel Purcell. So the defensive ends do it again. And timeout has been called by Eastern Illinois. So the Panthers changed quarterback. You would assume down 34-9 it would be to air out the football, but on consecutive plays they run, and that time Ikaka Lama Francis coming up with a big stop. For one thing, Colt Stinson, uh, at least in stature, far different from Mike Donato. Mike Donato, the guy who started for Eastern Illinois, he's 6'1", a buck 90. Colt Stinson on the other end of the size scale for a quarterback, 6'5", 240. So maybe uh, Coach Mark Hudson thinking that uh, Colt Stinson will be back there to run the ball a little bit. I don't know, but 
Down 34-9, you'll take anything you can get. Yeah, and I'll tell you right now, the Panthers may have made a mistake calling timeout here. If they don't get this first down, there's a good chance Hawaii's going to get the ball back with enough time to score again. Stinson, by the way, comes into this game 7 of 13, 52 yards in passing. And he's rushed once for minus seven yards. So with 115 left to play in the first half, a half that has been dominated by the Darth Vader like uniforms of the University of Hawaii. We'll see. Stinson to throw, lays it off on the far side. And with it is Norris Smith. And Smith, a very short gain, out to about the 20 yard line. That's all. And Hawaii playing some gang tackling defense right there. 11 players on defense, 10 of them are on the football when that play ended. So Hawaii getting a big stop, trying to get their hands back on the football with 104 left before recess. Hawaii calls a timeout here on fourth down. The University of Hawaii Athletic Scholar Spotlight. For this week is on Brittany Grice, the Wahine basketball team. Scholar Spotlight is presented by AIG Hawaii. Discover the AIG advantage. Brittany getting ready for the basketball season, political science major. And a very intelligent young lady, that's for sure. Here you see the acting coach for Eastern Illinois. And uh, that's Mark Hudson in his fourth year. Myra Newberry will be deep for Hawaii. Newberry's best punt return, 15 yards. 104 left in the first half. Very this is this is different. Formation. Yeah, very strange formation. They come to the line. Knights will punt it. It is taken by Newberry. And he has tackled. Good solo tackle that time by B.J. Brown on the special teams. 40-yard punt minus three-yard return. But Hawaii has 56 seconds left. And they can try to work their magic here in the final minute of the first half. And once again, the clock will start as soon as it's set for play. So Hawaii out there quickly. Lined up in formation. Brennan with Ilawa back there with him. First down from the 38-yard line. Brennan throws. That is complete. With it is Bess. And Bess is knocked down at the 45-yard line. Clock ticking. 36, 35 seconds left. Hawaii lining up without a huddle here. In the final minute of the first half, Brennan automatizing at the line. Now he backs up along with Ilawa. Brennan looking, looking. Could be in trouble. Could be in trouble. Steps away. He's clear. Still looking. Now throws. It's intercepted. And with it is number 47, Matt Westbrook. And Westbrook returns it to the Hawaii 45 yard line. Brennan can't believe it. And Westrick has been the guy that Hawaii's kind of been picking on on the uh, short crossing patterns. At that time, he just kind of stayed home, filled the lane when Brennan let, let it go. Stinson was right there to come up with the uh, interception. Westrick, excuse me, to come up with the pick. So no late touchdown for Hawaii. So a timeout by Eastern Illinois. It appeared as if Brennan was going to work his magic. He escaped, escaped. All of a sudden found the running room and then when he did elect to pass the ball he did not see Mr. Westbrook who had come into the zone and was perfectly positioned for the interception. Colt usually does a pretty good job like that. He sensed the pressure on the right side went to the left came back to the right trying to make something happen didn't work that time. Fifth interception of the season for Colt Brown. So now Eastern Illinois with a chance for a shocker here at the end of the first half. They have triple wide receivers lined up to the left. Stinson dancing. Stinson now throws and that is incomplete. Stinson tried uh, to find Mobley couldn't do it. 
Brad Kalili Moko covering on the floor. On the previous play, Colt Brennan, he's a gunslinger. June Jones likes it at the bottom, but the downside is he takes some shots. Took one there, stayed with it, tried to not give it up on a play, took another shot. And if you're a defensive guy and you're losing 34-9, and his interception, that's the kind of things you do. Just slay the lumber when you can. Second down and 10 from the 45. Stinson spinning out of trouble. Look out! He's hit and down he goes at the 46-yard line. No Purcell. That's the end of the first half. Mel Purcell with the exclamation point. Hawaii up 34 to 9. And Colt Brennan having a record breaking first half. Dude, I am so hungry. A sandwich? Dude, come on! Watch the weather! Are you guys done? Indulge in the rich taste of McDonald's McTerry and Double McTerry sandwiches. Made with 100% all beef and our own savory teriyaki sauce. And I fight all the time. Grown up siblings fighting like kids. John is very controlling. I'm not paying Everybody's still at home. How come? At each other's throats. What I have to say is just as important as what he has to say. Because you weren't listened to, you don't listen. Families too close for comfort. The force leading you to still behave like children is still alive. Somebody's got to break that. All new Dr. Keith Ablo. Monday at 4 on KHNL NBC 8. Hawaii over Eastern Illinois, 34 to 9. And the first half had some numbers of real great interest. First of all, in passing yards, Hawaii 369. 38 passing plays to only one rushing play. And there you see the rushing yards. Eastern Illinois, 121, and Hawaii minus six. You talk about different ways of getting it done. Total offense, Hawaii 363 yards to 142 for Eastern Illinois. Both quarterbacks have been sacked once, and Hawaii with a slight advantage, if you call it advantage, in time of possession. But in touchdown, Hawaii way out in front, 34 to nine. And Hawaii's had answers for everything that Eastern Illinois has thrown at them. Three deep zone, you beat that by running down the seam on the numbers. That's a touchdown there. Two deep zone, you beat that by running down the hash marks. Ian Sample beats that. Then Cole Brennan keeping it close to the ground. Nate Ilawa, 255-pounder, pounding it in. And then another touchdown, a great catch by Chad Mock. Hawaii getting it done through the air. Pretty much the only success the Panthers have had tonight have been on the run. Right here you're watching a 69-yard run by Vincent Webb, tackled by Kenny Patton, saving the touchdown. Great run. Now you're watching a little bit of misdirection here. Great smothering tackle by Peters. And, of course, here's a touchdown. Both guys from Hawaii jumped outside, and Norris Smith in for the touchdown. Well, what's on tap? Sponsored by Heineken. I turn to... Jim Donovan and Russ Yamanoha to find out what to look for in the second half. Exercise the passing game. You got to get uh, the Panthers out here has got to start throwing the ball and making the catch. You got those tall wide receivers. They got to exercise the passing game. And for Hawaii, it's going to be exercise the roster at 34-9. You know, Hawaii's going to go deep into that roster and see a lot of people don't normally get playing time. Get out there in the field and see what they can do. So Hawaii with a big lead at halftime. We'll see how the second half transpires right after this. It's time to enjoy life. It's time for enjoy snacks. Enjoy the taste. Enjoy the quality. It's a part of life that makes you smile. All the goodness of life in every bite. All the flavor and taste you want in life. It's time to enjoy life. It's time for enjoy snacks. How far would you go? 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 To find a cure for breast cancer. Register now for the Komen Hawaii Race for the Cure on Sunday, October 22nd at Kapiolani Park to help find a cure for breast cancer. 
Aloha has no boundaries. For more information, call the race hotline at 754-1817 or register online at komenhawaii.org. How far would you go? Next, all new Tyra. I'm blowing the cover off the, the secret world of prostitution. From the glamour. The money is so intoxicating. To the gutter. How much money do you make? Low as $15 a day. It's going to leave you speechless. When you're having sex with these guys, are you attracted to them? Are you aroused? Our cameras captured it all. Hi, I'm Tamara. And one last chance. Do you want help? Next, all new Tyra. Monday at 3 on KHNL NBC 8. This exclusive sports presentation of the home team is sponsored in part by Kaiser Permanente, Pride, and by American Savings Bank, helping Hawaii's businesses and communities grow. Tonight's halftime adjustment is sponsored by Cairo Plan Hawaii. Well, the first thing they've got to do is close the gap tonight. Uh, Panthers have got to get this score back in a little closer. I mean, they're in jeopardy of it, running away on them if it hasn't already. So they've got to close the gap. And with a record-setting performance by quarterback Colt Brennan for Hawaii in that first half, over 350 yards passing. If you're head coach Jim Jones, your halftime adjustment, no adjustment necessary. Your team is rolling. Your quarterback's looking fine. They've kept them upright pretty much throughout the entire first half. So just keep it status quo. What you're doing so far is working. Hawaii did not have a running play in the second quarter. And when you look at Bremen, 369 yards officially, five touchdowns and one interception. Hawaii ran 42 plays in the first half. They ran 55 plays in the entire Boise State game last week. So there you see uh, June Jones. And you see the difference here with the one Division One and the Division One Double A. 63 scholarships in Division One Double A, 85 scholarships in Division One. But this offense really has clicked tonight for Hawaii. And Colt Brennan is having a fantastic game. And Jim, this is one of those games that you kind of figured. That one of those rise up and bite you kind of games with Hawaii with that loss at Boise State that magnifies the game coming up next week in conference against Nevada. You kind of had the feeling that Hawaii might look past Eastern Illinois to that Nevada game, but that's not the case. Hawaii's come out big tonight. Ponius and Kessler are deep. It is Ponius. And he fakes the handoff to Kessler and gets out over the 10 to about the 12-yard line. So it will be first down for Eastern Illinois at that point. Rustin Saoli there to make the tackle on special teams for Hawaii. Cole Stinson remains at quarterback. And the question is whether the starting quarterback, Mike Donato, was injured or whether it was a philosophical change by the coaching staff. First down from the 12. Webb to the 13 and they really pounce on him there and they keep pouncing until he goes down. Mel Purcell was having a stellar game for Hawaii. Hard to say about Donato Jimmy standing there right on the sideline with a baseball cap on backwards near the, the coordinator so you can't really tell if it's an injury or if it's just a change to try and get something going. Second down and eight. Ball just over the 17. In motion is Duha, number 11. Stints in the throw. Up the sideline. He wants Rucker. Batted away. Good double coverage by Hawaii. CJ Hawthorne running stride for stride with Rucker. And then Leonard Peters coming from the inside. Jim, you talked about it that the uh, Eastern Illinois Panthers need to get their passing game going. They tried to right there. You just well, see that's a great play by Hawthorne. And when you have uh, Leonard Peters patrolling back there, it puts a little fear <laughs> into the heart of a receiver. Great range by Leonard Peters on that play. Third down and eight. Webb, the single setback. Stinson, the throw. And that is incomplete. That was intended for Campanella. 
Jordan Campanella, number 88, the tight end. And that will bring up fourth down. Myron Newberry will go back to receive for Hawaii, skipping to his position at midfield. And the bad news for Eastern Illinois, this is the third punt in a row that Newberry's been standing on or near his near or on the 50 yard line, which means Eastern Illinois is way back there in Hawaii is playing in a short field. Yates will punt. He has not been particularly handsome in his punts. The line drives it again at midfield, waiting for it. Newberry, then he stays away. Good decision by Newberry because uh, the defense was right all around that football. 35 yard punt and no return. Colt Brennan remains a quarterback for Hawaii. Coming off 369 yards in passing in the first half. You could tell Newbury wanted to pick that up and run with it, but they're taught over and over again when you can't predict which way it's bouncing, just get away. Rivers and Best to the left, Dickerson and Mock to the right, four wides. First down at the 46. Ball is given to Ilawa. It spins and then uh, drives forward to midfield. Gain on the play of close to four. That'll bring up second down and six. It would be contrasting, would it not? Uh, if uh, Hawaii ran all the plays here in the second half. <laughs> That's only the second running play of the game for Hawaii. Second down and about six. Ball in midfield. Here we go again. Ilawa makes the turn. He's at the 40. Ilawa to the 31 yard line. 18 yard game for Nilawa. Could this be the start of a trend here in the second half? Tristan Burge there finally to make the stop for Eastern Illinois. Like every Hawaii play does, it starts off in the shotgun. And it's just a shotgun give. And yet Ilawa takes it to the outside. This Eastern Illinois Panthers, the secondary especially, they've been getting torched. You know, they're looking for pass, and when Nate Ilawa gets it, it takes them a while to make the adjustment to the run. Best in motion. Third run in a row. Question mark. Answer yes. Ilawa. Fumble. Fumble. And that's recovered. That is recovered by Eastern Illinois. So Hawaii coughs it up. E.J. Brown comes up with the fumble recovery. Great job of putting his helmet right on the ball. It pops out. They're able to fall on it. That is the tenth fumble recovered this year by Eastern Illinois. And it's one of those cases of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The <laughs> passing game was working. They go with the run, and bad things happen. Good pop on the football right there by Eastern Illinois. Donald, over. Donald Thomas with the hit. Mobley in motion. Ball is given to Webb. Webb goes off the right side. Find some running room after initial contact. Adam Leonard finally ankle tackles him. Line of scrimmage being the 33 yard line. He's able to advance it just over the 40. So that'll bring up second down and three for Eastern Illinois. Just underway in the second half. 11 28 left to play. Hawaii leading and a controlling lead at that. 34 to 9. That's Hawaii's 12th turnover of the season. Ball is given on a sweep. To Rucker and Rucker has the first down as he gets to the 50 yard line. So the wide receiver getting the handoff that time and Adam Leonard pursued him and he was able to make the tackle. They've run this play a couple times where they've got a wide receiver going in motion. They'll either fake it to him or hand it to him. It's a little bit of a misdirection. It ends up being a sweep to the left. Nice gain there by Rucker. Hawaii on the season, by the way, by contrast, only three takeaways. The motion is Duha. Ball is given to Webb. And Webb is hit at the line of scrimmage and then spun. Trying to kind of a razzle dazzle timing play that time. CJ Allen Jones, number 33, was there to make the stop for the black shirts. Norris Smith 
has come into the game as the uh, running back. Smith number 22. Double wide receiver to the right. Stinson throws. That is complete to Rucker. And he's knocked out of bounds by Kenny Patton. That should be enough for a first down. And it is for Eastern Illinois. It tells you what kind of a player this Rucker guy is. Uh, he runs right by uh, Mel Purcell. Uh, excuse me, Ikaika Lama Francis on the sideline. Ikaika Lama Francis, a former basketball player, goes 6'6". And Rucker can stand right there with him. Rucker is a transfer from the University of Minnesota. He's ranked 17th in the nation in receiving on the one double-A level. Triple wide receiver now to the left. Norris Smith continues as a single setback behind Stinson, Cole Stinson. Quick pass. That's off the hands of Mobley. Could be intercepted. Let's see. What's the call? The officials, yes. It is an interception by C.J. Hawthorne. It went off Mobley's hands. Yes, and he C.J. Hawthorne gathered it in. Just an outstanding play by Hawthorne. Hawaii came out that time with a bunch of players. Only Leonard Peters was back. Everybody else was lined up about three yards off the line of scrimmage. Hawthorne was one of them. Works off of Walker. And when the ball was tipped up, it's a tip drill they do every day in practice. Hawthorne comes up with a nice interception. Hawaii back in business. Great heads up play by Hawthorne and uh, Hawaii defense have to start doing more of that. They need more takeaways. This is the fourth takeaway on the season. There you see going off Mosley and appearing. Appearing is Hawthorne. They might be reviewing this. Are they reviewing it? Gee, I didn't know anyone was in there up until this time. <laughs> they have that booth all sectioned off. You can't look in there. It's like an operating room. It has to be uh, indisputable evidence to overturn it. I don't think they're going to get it there. That's going to be a turnover for the University of Hawaii. Sure looked like a good catch to me. I mean, he did a good job holding on to the ball and turning over and showing me caught it. And good reactions by Hawthorne. He was coming in, broke off his receiver, broke off the coverage to come up and make a play on the intended receiver. And he was right there, Johnny, on the spot to come up with the pick. Interception stands. So Hawaii will go back to work with Colt Brennan. We'll see, we'll see whether the, he goes back to the air or whether he stays on the ground here. The last two, the last drive of the first half, the first drive of this half of turnover. So Hawaii needs to keep it, hold on to the football. They come out in the four wides, first and ten from their own 38 best in motion. Oh, here's Ilawa. Making the turn, getting a block, midfield, down the sidelines. Body runs out of room at the 47-yard line of Eastern Illinois. Keandre Sams ushered him out of bounds. 15-yard game for Ilawa. And Ilawa starting to get the yards. You watch that replay right there. A great log block by Hercules Satelli. Uh, they had a defensive end coming up the field. He makes contact, rolls around on him. That's called a log block. Great job there. First down for Hawaii at the 47 yard line of Eastern Illinois. We're in the third quarter. Hawaii leading. It's Ilawa again trying to bounce outside. Breaks one tackle, but not another. Offensive pursuit finally belts him to the turf again on the play of only one. And Hawaii so far here in the second half sticking to the ground. Tim Kelly was there to make the stop. This, this is a previous play, very similar to one that we just ran. It's going to the right. You're going to watch a log block right here on number 55. Great job by Hercules. Pins him inside, allows Nate to get outside and make a 15 yard game. Hawaii now 47 plays in the game, 400 yards in total offense. Second down and nine here. Ball is kept that time by Brennan. That time Brennan faked it to Ilawa. And he's able to move the ball inside the 45 to about the 42-yard line. Jeff Sobel, the defensive tackle, number 97, out of uh, 
Hevlin, Ohio, there to make the defensive play. This is a big play as far as momentum is concerned. There's really none going into the second half right now. Hawaii can make this third down. That'll start to put the momentum on their side. See if he passes on this play. He's got it. He will. He does. It's complete. First down. Complete the Chad Mock breaks a tackle and gets all the way to the 21 yard line. Terrence Sanders was the first to hit him. Lucius Seymour hit him out of bounds. 21 yard gain and a first down. One of the strengths of the Hawaii receiving core is Yak. Yards after the catch and they get it right here. Terrence Sanders comes up to make the tackle. Mock puts a move on him, stays in bounds. Some extra 10 yards right there and a nice hurdle over the signage. So Hawaii at the edge of the red zone. They come out on the four wides. Ilawa back with Brennan. Ilawa. And they're really keen on Ilawa now. I think uh, on that play right there, uh, Hercules went to log the guy again, and Nate went inside his block. And that allowed the defense to wrap him up and tackle him. Um, I think he needed to bounce outside there, but you know, it all happens in a split second for him. Yeah, it's just basic football. Andre Lima just cuts inside of his man. And before Ilawa knows it, Lima's there. Ilawa goes 255, but he's got a 300 pounder all over his back, and that's a, that's a tough battle to win. So Lima with the stop with help from his friends. Triple wide receiver to the left, second down and nine. Quick pass. That's a look in pattern, and that was complete to Jason Rivers. Very short game, however, from the 21 to about the 16. Lima again making the tackle for Eastern Illinois. Yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a little hair raising for a receiver. You're in the slot, they throw a quick out to you, you're running in, and all of a sudden there's a 300 pound defensive lineman staring you right in the face. Lima made the tackle, but it's a game for Hawaii. Here's a third down play again. Hawaii has been outstanding in third down conversions in this game. Brennan looking. Now throws. That is complete to Bessel. Oh, great move. Breaks two tackles. He's at the five, going for the corner, and I believe he's just short. Out inside the one yard line. 15 yard game. So you can see Bess. Yards after the catch. And when he catches it, that's only the beginning of a great adventure. One tackle, two tackle, and now the angle to the end zone, just short. Yeah, that's one of those that you almost wish they could just give him the touch on that one after all that work. It's almost like a Bass is barely touching the turf the way he's cutting out there. And right when he makes contact with the football, he cuts it, and that's just a sophomore, folks. He's getting it done. 409 yards now for Brennan and passing. Iwala tiptoes into the end zone. Great movement there by the offensive line. They had their defenders a couple yards into the end zone. Nobody could touch Nate. Yeah, that's a simple football right there. Cole Brennan under center. Wow. And one defender gets a arm on Ilao, but he takes it in, and it's the 40th point of the ball game for Hawaii. You get so the, the, the onslaught continues, but a particular interest now is the snap. Good snap, good hold, good kick. PAT puts up another point. 41 to 9. Hawaii leading. line that's my bank gonna make the kitchen bigger mom why going to cruise nah. want to put the equity in your home to good use 
Get a fixed rate Banco Home Equity loan and get the certainty of a low fixed payment every month. So what are you guys going to do with the loan? Oh! So get a home equity loan that'll make you proud to say, That's my bank! For a home equity loan with this low rate, apply at Bank of Hawaii today. Activate our high-speed internet today and get online for only $9.99 a month for the first three months. It's the best value in town. To connect, call 643-0805. Another touchdown drive for Hawaii. 62 yards in eight plays. Three minutes and 30 seconds of elapsed time. Ilawa, a one-yard run. So five rushes and three passes on that drive. And the key to the drive was two third down conversions. Hawaii leading 41 to 9. Ron Jordan and Adam Kessler are deep for Eastern Illinois. Dan Kelly will kick off for Hawaii. Ball is taken in the end zone and then downed by Ron Jordan. So at the 20 yard line, Eastern Illinois will go to work. They are down 41 to 9, and there are 6 minutes and 29 seconds left to play here in the third period. Any time now, Hawaii will probably go to their bench. It would be very surprising if they do not. Yeah, I think the night could be done for Cole Brennan, but we shall see. Stinton. In at quarterback with Smith, the single setback. Stinson will hand the ball and into the secondary, all the way out over the 35 yard line to the 37 yard line is Adeniji, Adamola Adeniji of Springfield, Illinois, just into the game. 17 yard game. Adeniji. It's almost like uh, you expect them to throw the football down 41-9, but when you can run it like that, why not? So the ball is advanced to the 37-yard line. Adeniji remains in the game, gets the call. Cannot bounce outside, and he's twirled to the turf by Adam Leonard. So Leonard, the outside linebacker, there to wrap him up. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Eastern Illinois with 31 yards in passing, 160 yards on the ground. Away with 409 yards in passing. And 37 on the ground. Talk about contrast. Adeniji. Holding on that time was Adam Leonard. Adeniji wanted to take him with him, but Leonard would not let go. Good game on that play, but that will bring a third down. And about three. The Panthers are having success running the ball here, but it's just eating up an awful lot of the clock when you're down 41 to 9. You just not you have the luxury to keep on doing this all the way down the field. Jason Fisher has gone in at wide receiver number 84 now for Eastern Illinois. Brian Burtis is off to the far side, the two wides. Adeniji, still the single setback. Adeniji, trying for the first down, doesn't get there. Boy, the wall just formed. Solomon Illuminium. Yeah, this no huddle for Eastern Illinois is not working. Hawaii is still managing to make defensive substitutions, and they run the clock all the way down to one second of the play clock. They're already eating up way too much time, and Hawaii is still getting it done on the defensive side. It almost behooves Eastern Illinois to go back in the huddle and run their normal offensive set. So fourth down, fourth down and two. The 
There's the punt. Newberry bobbles, gathers it in at the 15 yard line. That was dangerous. Actually, it bounced off of number two, the defensive player for Ben Brown for the Panthers. 37 yard punt and a minus two yard return. Homemade lasagna, a meal that can't be rushed. Well, now everything you love about the taste of lasagna is on a pizza. Ooh, mamma mia. Look at that. Introducing the new Sicilian lasagna pizza from Pizza Hut. Hearty beef topping and a blend of mozzarella, creamy ricotta, and Parmesan cheese, all on a seasoned crust. This pizza's a meal. Why you don't make pizza like this? Go for the good stuff. Need more pizza? Add on any medium pizza for just $7.50 more. In the dance of life, it's better to dance than to sit it out. Better for your body, heart, mind, and soul. Which is why HMSA encourages you to get up, get out, and get active. Whether you're breaking new ground or really breaking a sweat, keeping active is the best way to live a healthier, happier life. So get up, get out, get active, and go. HMSA, working for a healthier Hawaii. It's hard to avoid temptation with Meadow Gold Premium Ice Cream. With a new rich taste and convenient new package, Meadow Gold Premium Ice Cream is even more enticing. And on top of that, it's available in 12 irresistible flavors, from mint chocolate chip to rich creamy coffee. So go ahead, dig in. Indulgence has never been so rewarding. Meadow Gold, Hawaii's dairy. Nothing's fresher than Meadow Gold. You're watching Key 5 the home team. It's magically delicious. Hawaii is put in its uh, second unit as far as the offensive line is concerned. And Colt Brennan has been replaced by Inoke Funaki out of Laia and Kahuku High School. 5'11", 195, red shirt freshman just into the game. Funaki, one for one in passes, eight yards against UNLV. Two rushes for 16 yards against UNLV. First down for Hawaii at the 21. Funaki looking over the middle, throws. That is complete to the 30-yard line to Aaron Bain, number 85, just into the game. Bain out of Ayer. This is his backyard, Aloha Stadium, and out of St. Louis School. Nice protection by the second team offensive line. And if you're a Warrior fan, you got to love this. Seeing these guys getting some experience with uh, two minutes and 51 seconds left in the third quarter. Steinoff, Leituli, Kaunohi, Salafea, and Asun on that offensive line. Second down and one. The motion is Farmer just into the game. And Farmer playing. As a, a receiver, here's Ilawa. Ilawa with the first down, still carrying tacklers with him. And gets out over the 35, all the way to about the 38 yard line. Good game on the play by Nate Ilawa. He continues to impress. And Nate Ilawa's backup, Regan Maui, is out of this ball game. The whole new offensive line, a new quarterback. But Hawaii rotates the receivers so much that uh, you'll see a lot of receivers that played here in the first half. So first down for Hawaii at their own 38 yard line. They lead in this game 41 to 9. Funaki in a quarterback replacing Brennan. Funaki keeps. And Funaki gets swallowed up. I mean the white shirts were there to greet him. They would have none of his shenanigans. None of his prestidigitations. James Larson was there to give him a rip. Dare I say it, but it looks like Coach Jones is uh, eating up some of the clock uh, on that running play. As Jim said, there was nothing there. But more importantly, the clock keeps on running. When you combine it with what they did on that last series, eating up quite a bit of the clock. It's the first time I've seen it so far this year, but I think Coach Jones is eating up the clock. 120 left to play in the third period. Second down and eight. The ball at their own 40 yard line. From the shotgun. Funaki. Throws. That is complete to Jason Rivers, and Rivers takes a hit out of bounds. 
Tristan Burge was there for Eastern Illinois. And that is short of the first down. Gonna be heads up from the sideline. Takes a shot. Takes out a bunch of guys out there. Panaki puts the ball right there on the money. But Rivers takes a shot just before he goes out of bounds. Just misses Coach Glanville. Third and one. All eyes on this defense for Eastern Illinois looking at Ilawa in the shotgun with Funaki. Short yardage, Funaki on the option will turn the corner and get over midfield. That's a first down for Hawaii. And we have a late flag. So we have some bravado going on. And we'll see what the call is. Pierre Walters made the tackle on Funaki. But we have that penalty flag, and it appears to be personal foul or something after the play was over. After the play, personal foul, number four, offense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. It will be a first down. It's Ilawa. That does not please Coach Jones. And it was after uh, the first down was recorded. So it is still first down for Hawaii, but it'll be first down from their own 36 instead of from the 49 yard line or up the, from the 49 yard line of uh, Eastern Illinois. Hawaii, seven of eight on third down that's hard to do in a PlayStation game much less than an actual, <laughs> and an actual game seven of eight on third down first down from their own 36 yard line Funaki running now shovel pass to Ilawa Ilawa was looking toward his left for open space and then that was occupied and he decided to take as much as he could just straight up the middle William Hodor there to make uh, the stop Hodor is the junior 286 pounder 6-2 out of Fort Lauderdale Florida many of these Eastern Illinois players are from Fort Lauderdale 52 of the players are from the state of Illinois 25 are from the state of Florida so it is second down and about three and that should be the end of the third quarter and it is away leading 41 to 9 over Eastern Illinois, fourth quarter. Probably try to squib it, and he does. Ball comes loose, and the Bears have to get out of bounds. Rodgers along the sideline, another one. They're still in deep trouble at midfield, but they get it to Rodgers. They give it back now to the 30. They're down to the 20. Oh, the band is out on the field. He's going to go to the end zone. Will it count? Oh, the Bears have won. The most amazing, sensational, dramatic, heart-rending, exciting, thrilling finish in the history of college football. This new coach, uh, Coach Taylor, right? Eric Taylor, that's right. He's got himself a lot of pressure right now. With expectations like this, the only place you can go is down. I have no idea whether or not we can even win a game. There is not a person in the world that could do this except for you. I believe in you. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Premieres Tuesday, 8, 7 central on NBC. It's a new day today. Tell me what's been going on. Want to take every morning and just make it last, make it last, make it last. It's a new day all over. It's a new day today. Join Matt, Meredith, Al, and Ann. Weekday mornings on Today, only on NBC. This exclusive sports presentation of the home team is sponsored by Hawaiian Telecom. From local to long distance, wireless to internet, Hawaiian Telecom has solutions for all of your communication needs. Hawaiian Telecom, keeping Hawaii connected. Nakoa football is the official booster club of the University of Hawaii football team. For more information on the Nakoa football club, visit them on the web 
at www.nakoa.org. We begin the fourth quarter. Hawaii leading 41 to 9. David Farmer has come into the game. And he's in the backfield along with Funaki. Inoki Funaki taking over for Brennan in the third quarter continues here in the fourth quarter. Funaki dancing now throws. That is complete to Rivers at the 30. Rivers at the 20. And down he goes at the 17. His helmet comes out. And he could be shaken up. His head may have hit the turf. Yeah, I think his uh, earpiece might have might have come out as well. Helmet kind of exploded when it hit the turf. 39 yard completion from Funaki to Jason Rivers. And did he step out of bounds? I thought he stepped out of bounds maybe about 10 yards before the tackle kind of came close. And it was fake first into the turf. Let's see if he stepped out of bounds. No, yeah, he's still good, inside. Yeah. Good call by the officials. Let me tell you, that can hurt a lot more hitting your head into that turf than getting hit by any player because the turf don't move. Yep. River six catches now for 106 yards in the game. First down at the 18 yard line of Eastern Illinois. Funaki looking, throws. That is complete or incomplete. It was intended for Washington. He was open. He had to go up to try to catch that ball, but just couldn't hold on. That hit from Rivers, a part of his helmet is still sitting there on the field at about the 18 yard line, just in front of the near sideline. But uh, he goes out of the ball game as you look at the total offense way in favor of Hawaii. Malcolm Lane has come in to replace him. He is wide to the right. Second down and 10 from the 18 yard line of Eastern Illinois. Funaki looking right, looking, now looking, end zone, throws corner. That is incomplete. Oh, excellent play defensively that time from Eastern Illinois. It was uh, Ponius. Ponius, who usually returns a punt. He cut in front of Aaron Bain, the intended receiver. That'll bring up third down. Well, that's the difference between Colt Brennan and. Uh... Inoki Funaki, maybe Brennan, a little bit more mustard on it to the outside, maybe. But that time the ball hung up enough for Pontius to come over and make the play. So, a big third down play here for Hawaii. Funaki from the shotgun. Looks throws that's incomplete that was intended for Jason Rivers who had come back into the game that'll bring up fourth down we'll see uh, Dan Kelly come in to try a field goal here and of course with the field goal you have to have that snap Jake Ingram is the snapper and Funaki should be the holder we'll see where they place it line of scrimmage the 18. This is going to be a 35 yarder angle from the left. Kelly and field goals is one for one. He had a 42 yarder against Alabama. It's down. It's kicked. And it is good. Now we're told that the long snapper was David Farmer. Farmer was the long snapper that time instead of Jake Ingram.
Did you vote in Hawaii's primary election? Every vote counts, and every viewer who watched KHNL News 8 got the best election night coverage. With political experts and party pundits supporting the KHNL News 8 team, you got the most live, local, late-breaking coverage. Plus, KHNL.com kept you on target with live streaming and voting results. Stay with KHNL News 8's Decision 2006 for the most comprehensive coverage leading up to Hawaii's general election. And remember to vote on November 7th. Next Entertainment Tonight, Anna Nicole, new details on her bizarre Bahama I do's before burying her son. We're on the ground for the latest developments in the story that changes every moment. Then our CSI Miami Beach exclusive. Miami never looked so good. Plus a Grey's Anatomy star. And I'm going to be gloriously fat. An E.T. flashback to when she was. I'm afraid of gaining weight. And Oprah's fan surprise. Next E.T. Monday night at 6.30 on KHNL, NBC8. Big Island Candies or click on BigIslandCandies.com to order your favorite treats. New items are now available. Big Island Candies, home of the famous diagonally dipped shortbread cookies. <laughs> there you see Dan Kelly fresh off a 35-yard field goal, his second field goal of the season. And he will kick it to a beleaguered Eastern Illinois team. Hawaii now leading 44 to 9. Kickoff is deep. And it is taken by Ron Jordan. Jordan to the 15 to the 20. And he is hit from behind and carries the tackler with him. We have some more bravado going on. Ryan Kaomaka, number nine, able to run him down. It's been a long night for Eastern Illinois. That's a long road trip to make. From the state of Illinois. Gee, where are they located in the state of Illinois? Oh, in the eastern part. <laughs> right. And they played last week at Birmingham, Alabama. That's where Hawaii went to the play. The Crimson Tide, so they crisscross the country. They put on a lot of miles. That's a broken play. Stinson got the ball and really didn't know what to do with it. Something didn't materialize. Before the ball can be snapped, ball start, number 43 offense, five yard penalty, first down. Here you see Rucker in the season 16 receptions, but tonight only two. That's secondary now for Hawaii. Keo Maka, Dane Portless, Michael Malala, and Myra Newberry. Good gain up the middle all the way to the 30 yard line. And Adoniji carrying the ball. Jim, it looks like the Panthers have got most of their second string guys in there right now. I don't know what kind of statement that's making with 13 minutes left. Uh, maybe they want to get some other people some playing time. Satelli. Ashton Satelli now in it. One of the linebackers. Adamola Adeniji. Single setback. First down at the 37. Adeniji trying to get into that secondary, but he is nudged by Ilamimian and Kalilimoku in the middle. So Hawaii continually rotating and putting in new players here. Well, with their second team in there, that's a real statement for the Hawaii defense. They shut down Micah Rucker tonight, who's averaging 99 yards a game. He only had 17 tonight, two receptions. Great job by the Hawaii secondary. Stinson, Adeniji behind him. Stinson stepping away from the line of scrimmage. He will throw. Look out. Now he does. And that is caught on the 
49 yard line by Brian Burtis, number 82, Kale Mocker, there to make the defensive play. That's enough for a first down. And Eastern Illinois now has it at midfield. Eastern Illinois was never in this game. Just catch that time by Burtis. Just enough for the first down, a rare first down for Eastern Illinois in this ball game. Got Aniji up the middle and dragging black shirts with him. It's all the way down to the 40 yard line, very close to the first down. Victor Cora there to make the stop. Sixth freshman out of Kaneohe and Castle. And more players coming into the game. There you see the Eastern Illinois only 10 first downs in this ball game. They're two yards away from an 11th, but Hawaii out first down in them 25 to 10, and that's just the kind of night it's been for Eastern Illinois. Adonichi, still the single setback. Everybody turning towards the Eastern Illinois bench now here in the fourth period. 11:05 left to play in the game. Second down and two. Adonichi a free in the secondary. Adonichi spins inside the 30 and gets all the way down to the 28 yard line. Ryan Keomaka, Timo Paipule finally stopped him for Hawaii 16 yard gain. Adonichi. 44 9 the score Hawaii with the lead but the way Eastern Illinois is playing it you, you think that they have the lead they run the plays play clock down to a couple of seconds on almost every play right now the second teamers getting it done for the Panthers they're moving it 208 yards on the ground now for Eastern Illinois you got to believe coach Planville is getting a little bit concerned his second team's going up against their second team and they're marching the ball Stinson throws that is complete breaking a tackle is Burtis before he is belted out of bounds by Dane Porter. So that advances the ball inside the 20 yard line for Eastern Illinois. They're still playing hard. There's some second teamers out there battling for some uh, playing time after the missed tackle. Porlis comes over and lays the lumber. Knocks the receiver out of bounds and that stops the clock with this game moving along lightning fast. There's a chance this could be a ra uh, warrior rarity, a game in less than three hours. But the way Eastern Illinois is running the clock down, this is five seconds now on the play clock. Stinson, Adeniji, looking for the hole, finds one and gets inside the 15 to about the 12 yard line. Paipule able to reach out and Paipule there to ankle tackle him. Adeniji came into this game with only eight rushes and 34 yards. He's a long jump final in the National Junior Track and Field Championships in high school, so he has to strive. Hey, Phil, your idea is not working. Woo! Your niece has to go. You said you wanted a little afternoon pick me up. Go, Jack, go! And I delivered. Copy, and copy, 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 copy. I was thinking more of a treat. Like my real ice cream shakes, but let's add creamy whipped topping and a cherry. That'll beat the afternoon slump. No, 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 no! Leave. KHNL News 8 is with you online, on your cell, and now on your radio. Every weeknight, listen to KHNL News 8 at 6 on 97.5 KHNR-FM. Drive home with KHNL News 8, your live local late-breaking news station. Drew Bledsoe's in his 14th year. Sunday night football controversy. If he's not the right guy, the Cowboys have a long road. This week, an NFC showdown. Explosive offense collides with dominant defense. Only one will remain undefeated. Sunday Night Football. This look at the passing game is sponsored by Aloha Airlines, a proud supporter of UH Sports. For reservations and fare specials, visit alohaairlines.com. 
There you see Eastern Illinois 50 yards through the air. Hawaii 471 total offense in this game. Hawaii 522. And EIU 263. First down from the 15 yard line. Fake the handoff. Stinson throws off the hands of the intended receiver, Trent Steckel, just into the game. Number 43. He's out of Crystal Lake, Illinois, 6230. And a sophomore. So that'll bring up second down and 10. The ball at the 15 yard line. See the score 44 to 9. Hawaii over the Panthers. Well, they may run the play clock way down on every snap, but. Eastern Illinois still playing hard. This is a team that's won 10 straight games over the last two years in their conference. So, on the way, they're pretty good. Ball is given to Adoniji, and they figure him out right away. And he draws a crowd goal, and then the whistle blows. Adoniji runs the ball into the end zone. So, he's not going to like that. I think that should be reviewed. <laughs> He kept the legs fighting. They were pushing him back, but he kept the legs fighting. And when they he broke up, he never went down. He never went down. It's like one of those uh, prize fighters that uh, get on the referees for stopping the fight too early. It's what happened there. The refs blow the whistle, and you can see him nodding as he goes in. He's not happy with that call at all. I would not be either. Third down and 12. Stinson is looking to the sideline saying, what does it take for us to score a touchdown here? He, they call a timeout. You got to wonder what these guys are doing. Every time they come up to the line of scrimmage, they break the huddle. They come out of a timeout talking to the coach. They line up on the field and still stand there like they're calling an audible. I don't get it. Well, Russell, I'd say they're ready to get on their plane to go home. They got their second team in. <laughs> they're running the clock down to a few seconds left. I mean, they want to get these guys some experience, and they're not going to give up. The kids are playing hard, but you, you don't do this if you're out here to win the game. You don't run the clock down like that. You don't keep on running the ball. You're down by 30-something, so that's what I think. <laughs> they're getting the most out of their time here in Hawaii. The Eastern Illinois team lost to a Big Ten team in Illinois, the Fighting Illini, 42-17. So Hawaii even doing a better job than Illinois did. Illinois beat Michigan State today in a shocker. And I wonder if John L. Smith is going to blame that one on the officials. John, John L.'s got to be in a little bit of trouble up there after losing to Notre Dame at that comeback and then losing this week. He's got to be in a little jeopardy. It's got to be getting hot. Mark Hudson, he just, he will not call quits. He's still coaching over there for EIU. Third down and 12. Here we go again with Stinson stepping back. Stinson to throw. Pump fakes, goes for the end zone. That is intercepted. Byron Newberry. Ball was intended. For Jason Fisher in the deep corner, Newberry, with his back to the play, turned at just the right time and made the interception. Great coverage right there on the interception by Newberry. Jerry Glanville's got to be happy about that. So is Coach Miano. So I guess uh, what Stinson did was he audible to the throw into coverage play. Kick for Hawaii. There you see the turnaround by Newberry. From local to long distance wireless to internet, Hawaiian Telcom has solutions for all of your communications needs. Hawaiian Telcom keeping Hawaii connected. First down from the 20 yard line for Hawaii. Touchback on that interception by Newberry. Funaki with time. Still with time. Throws long up the sideline. And that's caught inside the 30 to the 20 yard line. Malcolm Lane, number 89, who went to high school in Hana Hanau American High School in Germany, originally out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 6'1 freshman. And for Lane, that is his first 
Division I reception, 58 yards. And how do you feel if you're the Eastern Illinois coaching staff? Your team's getting hammered 44-9, and Hawaii's still throwing the ball deep downfield like that. I'm impressed with the way Funaki threw that ball. That was a long throw. Irvin Jean Charles finally made the stop. First down for Hawaii at the 22-yard line of Eastern Illinois. Fourth quarter, Hawaii big lead. Funaki hands the ball to Farmer. And David Farmer, a player of many interests. He was the long snapper on the 35-yard field goal by Dan Kelly. And now he comes in as the running back here for the University of Hawaii. No gain on the play. It will be second down and 10. And you got to wonder what's we're listed. We've got Tyler Gronke listed in our two deep, just a backup quarterback for Hawaii. But Inoki Funaki has gone the entire way. Hawaii and as, after uh, June Jones decided to go with the second stringer, so you're going to wonder what's up with the Tyler Gronke. Hawaii in passing yards, 529. Funaki, 120. He is five for eight since taking over for Brennan in the second half. Funaki, quick pass. That is juggled and then dropped. Did he have it long enough for a fumble? No, he did not. Was intended for Lane. Maybe the pass was too short. <laughs> Offensive line doing a great job here. This second team, you can tell the Warriors are very deep at offensive line. They gave them all kinds of pass protection on that long pass, allowed him to slide outside. Malcolm Wayne kept on going deep. Fanaki throws it great. They're doing a good job here on the running plays. Coach Jones and uh, Coach Suen and Coach McKnight got to be really happy with how this second team offensive line is playing right now. 7:22 left to play in the game. Hawaii comes out with the four wides. Farmer is back with Funaki. Funaki out of Laie. Throws for the end zone. Batted away. Was intended for Lane. And Sean Campbell, number 49, able to cross over and bat that ball away. Excellent defensive play. And that'll bring a fourth down. We're talking about the Tyler Gronke. I think this, I think he's over there on the sideline in street blow, so he may be out with an injury, and that's the reason why Kanak is in the ball game. So the down marker shows four. Hawaii will go for it. Fourth and ten from the 22. Funaki in the shotgun again. Here comes the rush. Stepping, stepping. And he's not going to get it off. They sack him back at the 32 yard line. Loss of 10. First down, Eastern Illinois. Coach Jones has said before that when you're up on a team like this and it's near the end of the game, they'll go ahead and go for it on fourth down and give their opponent defense a chance to stop Hawaii, show a little respect for them. When he does that, that's totally out of respect for the opponent team. is a beautiful thing. Experience KP.org. Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Big time. Little John delivers. Oh yeah. Every time the beat drop. 212, I sweep the awards next year. I'm with that. I holla, man. Every time the beat drop. Central Pacific Bank sponsors the Loyalty Award by donating $100 toward a Central Pacific Bank endowed scholarship fund for every touchdown. Hawaii scores. Central Pacific Bank has had to dig deep tonight. So first down for Eastern Illinois. We're in the fourth period. It is 44 to 9. Hawaii out in front. Steckel in motion. Adoniji. No. 
tried to turn the corner. And then he was met ferociously by the defense. <laughs> Micah Lau, number 26, just into the game, made the tackle. Stepple almost came back, looked like he almost blocked his own offensive lineman out of that play. But, uh, that's what happens when the, the reserves are in there in, the, in garbage time. Fisher and Curtis are the wide receivers now, second down. And 10 from the 31. Stinson throws. That is complete. It was intended for Curtis, who went to the 40 yard line and then settled into the zone. And Stinson drilled him with the pass. Gerard Lewis there to tackle him for Hawaii. Five minutes and 50 seconds left to play in a game that has been decided a long time ago. Third down and one from the 40. Adeniji. First down gets to the 44 yard line. About it in open, it's a must. It's a excuse me, a get fat game for Hawaii. They've done that but now. Now comes a big game against Nevada. That's a must win, especially coming off that loss at Boise State last week in the WAC race. And Hawaii having to face that pistol offense that the Wolfpack likes to run. First down for Eastern Illinois at the 44. Stinson gives it again to Adeniji. And Adeniji just, I mean, like a magnet, he draws attention of the team in black and very dark green helmets. Penalty flag has been thrown. Great job by the defensive line, controlling the line of scrimmage, getting penetration. Uh, I think it was an inadvertent face mask right there, what they called. You saw the flag. So this game will be remembered as Hawaii just using their offense to perfection, getting off to a big lead early, scoring 21 points in the first quarter, 13 in the second. And here in the second half, letting the reserves play. First down because of the penalty to the 41-yard line of Hawaii. Eastern Illinois would love to get into double digits in this game. Stinson, short drop, sideline pattern, incomplete, oh. and Duhai just gets nailed by Porlis, and they call they call a penalty personal foul on Porlis. I don't know. That's one that's dictated by the scoreboard. And and I don't agree with that call either. Was, it, was it helmet to helmet because it was instantaneous after the ball had not been caught. Porlis really belted him. Yeah, from our angle, the uh, receiver got by. Helmet to helmet contact on a defenseless receiver. Out of the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Helmet to helmet, they said. Well, in any case, it was a great hit. <laughs> Well, you can hear that, can't you? That's just football. That's just football, folks. That just was a brutal hit that time. First down again for Eastern Illinois at the 26. Ball is given uh, to the little guy. And that's uh, Norris Smith at 5'9". Smith appeared in the secondary very quickly, but Timo Pike fully was able to stop him after a very good game. In fact, that it is not uh, Norris, it is Jordan, and Jordan at 5'8". So Jordan, number 32, and Norris, number 22. There's the obligatory step back, look around. Observe the beautiful Aloha Stadium and then we'll play football. 
Jordan remains in the game. Jordan gets swallowed. He gets engulfed by the defense. Michael Lau led the charge. Jordan just carrying the ball for the first time. He's out of Westerville, Ohio. 5'8", 173-pound freshman. He comes to the side. Adeniji goes back in as the single setback with 314 left. Eastern Illinois trying to punch one in here. Third down and about two and a half. Adeniji to the 15. Adeniji has become a workhorse here in the second half for Eastern Illinois. Victor Ferguson, number 11, from Kamuela on the Big Island of Hawaii. He went to Hawaii Prep, making the tackle for Hawaii. 6'2", 218, a senior. First down again for Eastern Illinois. 240, 239 left. Clock ticking. Stinson in no hurry. Stinson, Adeniji. Adeniji uh, still on his feet and finally succumbs to the pressure at about the 11. Speaking of the Wolfpack coming in here next week, uh, they were winners today over UNLV 31 to 3. Uh, you look at the margin for Hawaii when they played UNLV, it was 29 points. Hawaii beat them 42 13. Today it's 28 for Nevada over UNLV. That shapes up to be a pretty good game. That's next week, and that is a big game. Stinson steps back, audibles to the dive play. <laughs> Again. Stinson throws. Is that complete? It is. Steckel made the catch, but about at the line of scrimmage. And the clock will continue to roll. 139 left. In fact, they lose yardage on the play. Back to the 13, a loss of two. Adeniji still back in. Very slippery runner. Boy, they take their time. They, they are in no hurry. Did he audible to the dive this time? Adeniji. Adeniji tripped up as he gets inside the 10. That is short of the first down. That will bring up fourth down and about two. Myron Newberry there to make the stop. Rushing Webb, Adeniji, Smith, Rucker, Jordan, Kessler, and Stinson. Seven different rushers in the game for Eastern Illinois. Big fourth down play here. That shows up in the rushing yards for you for uh, Eastern Illinois 235 yards on the ground. Final minute of play in the game 42 seconds left out in EG single setback behind Stinson. Stinson looking to the side. This could be the last play of the game the way they're eating up the clock. Stinson out in EG. I don't think he got the first down. Hawaii will take over and the game will come to a close. Hawaii will even their season at two and two and then point to next week as they go back into the Western Athletic Conference. Nevada comes calling. Eighteen seconds left to play in the game. Well if you're Coach Jones you got to be happy you get your second team guys in for a quarter and a half. Your first team did pretty well. It's a pretty good night. You got to like the kickoff coverage. They did a good job. Those banditos, they got a lot of practice tonight. Well, they've marked the ball for play, and Hawaii is just satisfied to let it run out, and it will run out right now. So, June Jones able to garner another victory, and for June Jones, his 55th as coach of uh, University of Hawaii. Brennan, record breaking performance. At Cairo Plan Hawaii, we're specialists in you. You, you're the one.
You're the reason we're locally owned and managed. You're the reason we have more than 60 clinics statewide. You're the reason our care is affordable. You're the reason we care for you like family. At Cairo Plan Hawaii, we're specialists in you. It's nice giving our business customers something to talk about. You can call it buzz, a recommendation, or word of mouth. By helping their businesses grow and making things happen with the right products and services, the word's getting around. One business customer leads to another at American Savings Bank. Oh, he wins big tonight over Eastern Illinois. 44 to 9 is the final. Time now for the Red Star Moment, sponsored by Heineken. It's all about the beer, Heineken. And it comes with this touchdown pass and a great catch by Chad Mock, number 88, checking to see whether he's on sides. Brennan looks into the end zone, throws it high, and Mock goes up, makes the catch, and holds on as he hits the turf hard in the end zone. It was one of five touchdown passes. And this is a Samples a touchdown reception by Brennan. So two great passes for touchdown by Brennan. Five in the game, 409 total yards passing. More to come. Sit down. I'm Dr. Angus. Watch what happens when someone who can't sit takes hold of the Angus Roman Swiss. What do you feel like doing now? I want to sit down. The magic combination of Angus, Shrooms, and Swiss is so good it makes people sit. Meat meets mushroom, but meat see. Buns up, buns down. I'm full of sit, you're full of sit, we're all full of sit. The Angus, Shroom, and Swiss, the ultimate sit-down burger. supporting UH Athletics. Get the good life. Great price savings this weekend. Monday morning on KHL News 8. Halloween is still a month away, but it's never too early to start planning your spectacular celebration. It doesn't have to put a hole in your wallet. We'll have details on how you can have Halloween fun on a budget. See you Monday morning right here from 5 to 7. See you then. NBC Monday, America's new night for great television. Starting with an all-new episode of Deal or No Deal. <laughs> Then, it's the new sensation heroes, ordinary people discovering extraordinary abilities. We are all connected. And on the critically acclaimed Studio 60, when the lights go out, the real trouble begins. What are you staring at? My mugshot. All new Deal or No Deal, followed by Heroes and Studio 60. What a Monday on NBC. Time now for our choice for tonight's most valuable player, sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. Lock to choose from for Eastern Illinois, the starting running back, Vincent Webb, 11 rushes, 117 yards. And for Hawaii, Ian Samples, six receptions, 122 yards, and two touchdowns for number three of the team in black. Bank of Hawaii salutes these two deserving players. From local to long distance, wireless to internet, Hawaiian Telcom has solutions for all of your communications needs. Hawaiian Telcom keeping Hawaii connected. Next Saturday, the Warriors return to Western Athletic Conference play against the Wolfpack of Nevada right here at Aloha Stadium. For Russell Yamanoha and Jim Donovan, this is Jim Leahy wishing you the best from Aloha Stadium. This has been another exclusive sports presentation of K5. The home team, Alamapono Kekahi, Kekahi.
Welcome to the big city. Everybody's a regular big city diner. What's your favorite? Oh, kimchi fried rice. The ribs, the guava ribs. Like the big Oreo sundae. The paniolo chicken salad. Ray Chan's island style poke. It's the best in town. Absolute best. Absolutely everything. Come to Big City Diner and discover your favorite. Pollyanna and Elima award winning Big City Diner. There's no diner finer than Big City. The 42nd Annual Food and New Product Show is just around the corner. Reserve your booth space and be a part of the original and still the best expo in Hawaii. Call Pacific Expos at 945-3594 or log on to PacificExpos.com for booth reservation and information. We're the K-5 Comedy Blockheads. And you're watching K-5, the whole team. It's hot! We now join the following program in progress. It's time to get your laugh on with the entertainmentstudios.com comedy jam. Please give it up for the very funny and talented Edwin San Juan, everybody. Edwin! Filipinos are funny by nature. I was born in Taiwan, so I was made in Taiwan. I think that's where the funniest started. <laughs> Where's the Latinos that make some noise? <laughs> all right, all right. I'm not Latino. <laughs> I'm Chino. <laughs> Filipino. <laughs> I'm Filipino. Filipinos, we just look like stone Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind having slanted eyes, it's cool, you know. If I drive home drunk and the cop sees me swerve, he just says, oh, he's Asian, they're supposed to do that. <laughs> and then I go, oh, so sorry, officer, so sorry. <laughs> See how you laughed at that? That was Wong. <laughs> it's messed up, everybody makes fun of Asians. I think that's not right. Right, Latinos, right? Chinos learn how to drive. <laughs> Asians can't drive, but at least we have car insurance. <laughs> See how that feels? If I wasn't a comedian, I would probably be still living at my mom's house, <laughs> working at the post office. <laughs> I wouldn't shoot anybody, though. That's your job. <laughs> Some things aren't fair in life, you know what I'm saying? On everyone else, they call this a goatee. On Asians, it's a Fu Manchu. <laughs> right? Jerry Rice, one of my favorite players of all time, right? A lot of people have Jerry Rice jerseys. Asians can't wear jerseys that say rice on the back. <laughs> Oh, you like rice. Oh, rice are very good. They say Filipinos eat dogs. Have you heard that? If you heard that, say roof, roof. Oh, see, now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Filipinos eat dogs. I only have one thing to say about that. It's not bad. <laughs> For Thanksgiving, everybody gets a leg. <laughs> Dog meat's not bad. It's just a little rough. <laughs> We did have a lot of dogs, too, when I was growing up. I don't know what happened. They just all disappeared. I was like, Mama, what happened to Main Dish? <laughs> oh, he ran away with appetizer. <laughs> Do we still have leftover? <laughs> you know, today there was a Filipino in front of Taco Bell all pissed off. What do you mean I can't order the Chihuahua? <laughs> That's on the menu. That's false advertisement. You guys, my name's Edwin. Thank you very much. Coming up next, the music download with Mariah Carey. People love their hover round power chairs. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I get embarrassed when people say they love me. After I show them how much fun it is to get their independence back. I love getting out of my house again. And boy, is it easy. You made me love you. Hi, I'm Tom Cruise, inventor of the hover round. I can't sing, but I can guarantee you, you'll love what you can do in your hover round. I'm amazed at the people who say they love us just because we got them their hover round at little or no cost. I love hover round because it did not cost me one penny. Hover round is like riding around in an easy chair with wheels. You made 
made me love you and all the time you knew it people just love the round design we say it's round for a reason so you can turn and get through the narrowest door or hallway i love how easy it is to maneuver to find out more call this number to get your free hover round information kit you'll also love hover round's exclusive pressure release system with lumbar support four inch thick foam and comfort ride inner springs it's time you fell in love with a hover round and learned how to be independent again. Call this number to get your free hover round information kit, which includes a free video and a free test drive certificate. A hover round mobility specialist will also do a personal evaluation to find the perfect model for you. Call today and you'll also get this special comparison guide that tells you how to choose the power chair that's right for you. There's no obligation. Call now to learn how you may get your hub around for little or no cost. You made me love you. Call 1-800-495-8800 today to get your free hub around information kit. That's 1-800-495-8800. Next, all new Tyra. I'm blowing the cover off the secret world of prostitution. From the glamour. The money is so intoxicating. To the gutter. How much money do you make? Low as $15 a day. It's gonna leave you speechless. When you're having sex with these guys, are you attracted to them? Are you aroused? Our cameras captured it all. Hi, I'm Tamara. And one last chance. Do you want help? Next, all new Tyra. Monday at 3 on KHNL NBC 8. Welcome back to EntertainmentStudios.com, where the stars continue to shine. Change your shape with new Dexatrim Max 2O. It curbs my appetite. It kickstarts my metabolism. For a healthy way to lose weight, new Dexatrim Max 2O. Max out your water. Looking for a lightweight vacuum that'll get your house spotless? Try my Auric XL free for 30 days. Nothing gets by an Auric. Losing the battle against dry, rough, cracked feet? Fight back with Gold Bond Foot Cream. It helps heal like ordinary lotions can't. Gold Bond Foot Cream. Victory over defeat. Well, that's it. I'd like to thank everybody here at EntertainmentStudios.com and you. Until next time, peace. You're watching K5, the home team. Don't touch that remote. The heart of my question was, were you giving drugs to her friends? So you understand, I'm yes. trying to get to yeah, the truth here with you. I'm not trying to lean on you, but it's time to get to the truth. I know how hard it is to do this, which by the way means that you have a conscience. There's some people who wouldn't be crying about this. Does she love you? I have no idea. You're finally with somebody who loves you. She's lying. You know why this is real? It's about your lives and the lives of your children. Everyone has a life story. You have the power to rewrite yours and make it better. Meet Dr. Keith Ablo. I'm a psychiatrist. I've done this work over 15 years. I'm fully committed to holding people's hands while we explore their pasts. This fall, the Dr. Keith Ablo Show comes to daytime television. You don't want to enable this. She needs to know what's on the line, her kids and her husband. Now, a first look at the doctor who's changing how we look at ourselves. When I ask you to tell me about your pain, you'll let it out in tiny doses. When I know it's worse than that. Are you psychic? No, I'm just a psychiatrist. Uh -huh. you know, psychic is another degree, uh -huh. I think. <laughs> 
think guys just like to get, take, 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 and they don't like to give back. Sometimes you have to be stern, right? You have to withhold, because men can be like mice in a maze. They're very competent that way. They're like, uh-oh, wall. <laughs> I'll go over here, right? And then I'll go over here, and you can teach them. Sometimes we're gonna laugh, sometimes we're gonna cry. That's life. I want very much for us to be at the point where we were when we first met. You people are closer than the point at which you first met because intimacy, it's not just sex. It's when I tell you who I really am and things I've never told anybody else. It's human nature to avoid the things in our lives that are painful to us, but you know what? They're the source of our greatest potential strength. How do you think, think the sex will be after she, she gives she, she, birth? How will the sex be? The wow, same? Dr. Keith. Mine will <laughs> And coming up, a preview of the exclusive interview with an American Idol. Nobody knew, but I was terrified. I was terrified the teacher was going to call on me to read out loud. He's a doctor, a psychiatrist, and now the host of an exciting new show. Summer, you've been very quiet and patient, which generally means you have something very important to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I built it up like that. This is a special preview. Make an appointment with Dr. Keith Ablo. Folks, Dr. Keith Ablo. <laughs> Starting September 11th, viewers across the country will see Dr. Keith offer practical solutions to the personal struggles we all face. Everybody has complications that they have to deal with in their lives. And to the extent that you're willing to say that there are complications and to take them head on, you actually empower yourself, but more than that, you empower other people. So when you hear these stories, I want you to understand that these are very courageous people who are at critical moments in their lives, and we're gonna help them resolve their stories and hopefully write better chapters going forward so their futures can be brighter than they would be otherwise. Your stepsister, Tiffany, said that she cares about you, and your stepmother said that she wants to love you, do you believe any of that? I do love her. I'm not saying I don't love her. I love her and I care about her. That's part of the problem, is loving somebody who doesn't really love you back. There's a difference you know? between and feeling it and, love and knowing it. You hear what they're saying, you don't feel it? No, I've never felt like I've actually been accepted at all. But why should I put myself in a position to try to be accepting whenever she's never, she has never wanted to accept us? Because you said you love her, and she's hurting. And we're not? Of course you are, and I expect the same thing from you. These people haven't had perfect lives. You haven't had a perfect life. You've all had loss. What's so frightening for you? Because what are you scared of if there's five more people who want to love you? What's so scary about that? Oh, well, let me tell you what's so scary about that if she can't. She lost her mother when she was three, and she has one memory of her that told me last night that she, was, she went swimming and she hugged her mother afterwards. And that's all she's got. Everyone I have loved, I have lost. Would you want to love somebody if you lose everyone? And now I'm trying to feel, now I, I feel like I'm losing my dad. I don't want to lose him too. I don't want to love people anymore. I don't want to get well, close. The biggest hurdle that people run into, believe it or not, is talking to one another and saying what they really feel because people come to feel alone. And feeling alone when you're living with someone is one of the worst feelings you can have. From one father to another, for better or worse, you're gonna have to be the architect of the relationships between these women to some extent. You are going to have to set aside dedicated time that she can rely on for you too so she has the sense that she's not losing her father. And there's gonna have to be a concession from Candace that the world's changed. Candace, I think what they need is some reassurance from you. Okay, let's try to make it work. You've been through enough, enough already. Let's, let's let the healing begin. We can survive so much more than we believe. We just need someone to tell us that, someone we can trust. More life stories with Dr. Keith Ablo coming up. But first, Dr. Keith hits the street. I'm a psychiatrist. Tell me what's on your mind. I want to do what you're doing, be on TV. You want to be on TV? Yes. Well, there you go. Still to come, an American Idol conquers an eating disorder. It would be okay, 
for a while and then it would be not okay. The exclusive interview with Catherine McPhee coming up on Dr. Keith Ablo. Is conflict tearing your family apart? If you want help with family issues, go to drkeithtv.com or call 1-888-DR-KEITH. I'm Dr. Keith Ablo. My entire life has been dedicated to helping people have better lives, and that's what I intend to do with my new show. Please join me. Next, all new Tyra. I'm blowing the cover off the, the secret world of prostitution. From the glamour. The money is so intoxicating. To the gutter. How much money do you make? Low is $15 a day. It's going to leave you speechless. When you're having sex with these guys, are you attracted to them? Are you aroused? Our cameras captured it all. Hi, I'm Tamara. And one last chance. Do you want help? Next, all new Tyra. Monday at 3 on KHNL NBC 8. Coach, uh, Coach Taylor, right? Eric Taylor, that's right. He's got himself a lot of pressure right now. With expectations like this, the only place you can go is down. I have no idea whether or not we can even win a game. There is not a person in the world that could do this except for you. I believe in you. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Can't lose. Friday Night Lights premieres Tuesday, 8, 7 central on NBC. This fall, get ready to meet Dr. Keith Ablo. I was born in Marblehead, Massachusetts, which is a little coastal town north of Boston. I have one sister, three years older, Karen. My mom was a school teacher, and my dad was a salesman. I was a, I think, a fairly serious kid. I was very sensitive, right, a psychiatrist in the making. He graduated from Brown and Johns Hopkins Medical School, where he earned a degree in psychiatry. Along the way, he married Debbie, and together they have two children. He's also a writer, the author of several best-selling books, frequent columns for the New York Times that have stirred widespread discussion, numerous feature articles in high-profile magazines, and he's become the media choice when it comes to analyzing today's top stories. Joining me now is Dr. Keith Ablo, author of Inside the Mind of Scott Peterson. And we knew we'd need some help figuring this guy out, so who better than our favorite forensic psychiatrist, Dr. Keith Ablo? He is the host and executive producer of the Dr. Keith Ablo Show. Good title, huh? It is a good yeah. title. <laughs> there you go. It must have taken you forever to come up with that. Yeah, you know, we want to be creative <laughs> with it. I'm Dr. Keith Ablo. I believe everyone has a story, and we're going to prove it right now on the streets of New York. How are you? I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you have a few minutes? Yes, I do. Have you been stopped by other psychiatrists on not, the street? Not today. I have a show coming out called Dr. Keith Ablo. The whole theory behind my show, I believe that everyone has a really interesting story. And everybody's got some loose ends in their story. Everybody does. Because everybody is a human being. Three hats. Right. What's the story? Right. So, right. what's on your mind? I just got out of a three-year relationship. Like me. Uh-huh. Right? I'm just interested in the truth. Right. It's always through pain that people make the deepest connections. My wife says to me before I did the pilot of my show, do you know it's trash day? I said, do I know it's trash day? I got to do the pilot. Could you take out the trash? Right. And I know that what she's asking me for is that other role, the other hat. She's saying to me, can you, can you be my husband for the moment? Because it's making me worried that you get the talk show, maybe you'll forget me. How do you deal with it? Take out the trash. Me too. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. What's on your mind? I guess I'm a little worried about him leaving to go to law school. <laughs> you're going to, to Rutgers uh, and you're leaving her? Yeah. yeah. She just quietly told you a story. She's worried about how her life will be and how yours will be while you're apart. Right. You have every option, you know that. You could probably say to her, let's not be apart. Really? Uh, well, we'll have to talk about that over dinner. You could look a long time for someone like this. 
I don't want you to have the experience of finishing law school, practicing four years of law, and saying, how do I find someone like that again? Right. She's a keeper. Anyhow, talk about yes. it over dinner. Yeah. Let we me will. know about law school and whether you guys end up together. We will. All right. I have problems with dating. You do? Tell me your problem with dating. It's basically when I go out with someone yeah. within, like, weeks, they're either telling me they love me or that they want to marry me, and so I immediately run away. So, um, so they want to marry you, but they yeah. don't know you. Right. I think freak you out. It freaks me out, but I'm I'm very open. Yeah. So I think that that leads people to believe that they truly know me. Right. Uh, and if I were to push you, like let's say further than you imagined, I would push you. What would I get to? What's your sadness? I guess the fact that I've never been able to truly open myself up completely to someone. Why are you guarded? I don't know, because I've never been weak and I'm afraid of being weak, probably. <laughs> and if you were weak, have you been weak before? Like, did you feel weak as a little girl? Um, I had an incident happen in my family where uh, I lost one of my sisters, so I was mm. very weak. <laughs> or, or just human? See, I don't know if I would look at it as that, but... I just, I just crying is like an opening yourself up that much. Someone is a weakness to me. Is this stuff you talk about with the men you date? No, oh, God, no. I so mean, they don't really fall in love with you, because this is you. Yeah, probably not. Like, I know more about you now than these men after two weeks. You do this on the third date? and somebody responds in a way that's not human, you don't need to go for a fourth date. You can do it faster. On the other hand, somebody who takes your hand and says, tell me more, like, what was she like? What was she like? I, just, I can't talk about it. If I had lost a sister at the age you did, I'd probably end up dating guys who, uh, or girls in this case, who were uh, pretty superficial. Because I wouldn't want to do this. I'd be scared of it. <laughs> That's but, so awful. <laughs> no, it's great. You know what? It's not awful. It's human. You think of things that are human as awful. Yeah, kind but of. But it's the best part of you. Anybody who could propose to you without knowing who you are, and this is a huge chapter in your life story, doesn't deserve two weeks. Much more with Dr. Keith Ablo coming up. But first, we'll meet the McPhee sisters. Enjoy the show. Come on, everybody. Catherine McPhee would go on to become an idol, but an idol with a secret. Now she and her sister tell all when they meet Dr. Keith. Are you having problems in your romantic relationships? If you want help with relationship issues, go to drkeithtv.com or call 1-888-DR-KEITH. Think your life can be better than it is? Well, you're right. I'm Dr. Keith Ablo. Join me for my new show, and I'll help you have healthier, happier tomorrows. Rita Hayworth was one of the world's most elegant and glamorous movie stars. But she was also my sweet and very loving mother, whose life was ravaged by Alzheimer's disease, when few people knew what it was and little could be done about it. Today things have changed. There are treatments to manage Alzheimer's, including effective prescription medicines. So early diagnosis is crucial. And the Alzheimer's Association gives direction and support to people with Alzheimer's and those who care for them. So if someone you love forgets things more and more or asks questions over and over, I urge you to see a doctor soon and call the Alzheimer's Association. Unlike my mother's time, today there's hope for people with Alzheimer's and their families.
Masked Entertainment Tonight. Anna Nicole, new details on her bizarre Bahama I do's before burying her son. We're on the ground for the latest developments in the story that changes every moment. Then our CSI Miami Beach exclusive. Miami never looks so good. <laughs> Plus a Grey's Anatomy star. And I'm going to get gloriously an E.T. flashback to when she was. I'm afraid of gaining weight. And Oprah's fan surprise. Next E.T. Monday night at 6.30 on KHNL, NBC8. From the earliest days of their childhood, these sisters had a very special bond. And while the whole world watched Catherine compete for the title of American Idol, her sister Adriana saw a very different person. Now, two sisters and two stories come together on Dr. Keith Ablo. Today, I'm very glad to welcome to the show Catherine McPhee and her sister, Adriana. When it comes to interviews with celebrities, Dr. Keith Ablo treats them with a unique kind of honesty and insight. You allude to, of course, that you had demons that you needed to confront. Yeah. Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem was huge for me because I was like, I was always the pretty little girl who was stupid, mm. you know, and, um, and that was really difficult on me. I remember every morning driving to school and my dad would take us to school and nobody knew, but I was terrified just to be at school. I couldn't wait mm -hmm. till recess. I, I was terrified the teacher was going to call on me to read out loud, you know. I Because mean, you had a reading problem. Yeah, I had a reading problem. I had to go to, um, through eye therapy for over a year uh, before I, about the seventh grade was finally when we realized it was an actual physical problem. It wasn't like a mental thing, you know. Mm. And, and wow. there's just all these kinds of things that, that happen to kids that parents don't know about and that really affect their self-esteem. So then this little girl grows up that you know, thinking that being beautiful is the only thing that's important, you know, mm -hmm. obviously I'm going to go have an eating disorder. Because you have a tight-knit family and you had relied on your mother, your dad, your mm -hmm. sister for support, obviously they had given you enough encouragement that after a very long time you said, I'm going to tell the truth to these people. Right. You never want to, like, reveal something that is uncomfortable to reveal, so... Mm -hmm. You know, this is what I've been doing to myself for like the past three months, you know, binging and purging and, you know, starving myself. Towards the beginning, it was a lot of starving. You've gone on for years. Mm. Well, yeah, after the fact that I told, you know, it still had gone on. It would be okay for a while and then it would be not okay. Mm -hmm. It was almost like a bringing together because mm -hmm. I was so in the dark. I have to tell you, by the way, that. We, we're like a family here in a certain way because it's my core belief that when people do what you've done, mm. which is to share your pain mm -hmm. and the truth about your life, mm -hmm. you change lives. Mm -hmm. In the middle mm -hmm. of the biggest moment of your life, with people saying, we want to give you a record contract, we want you to be in films, you say, first let me be human mm -hmm. and see yeah. if I can help some people. And I think that's amazing. So you're our idol here. <laughs> People are going to watch this show and they're going to see the power of what happens when people confront the truth about their lives. They're going to see courageous people unburden themselves and move forward in a much stronger direction. What happens when a previously healthy and happy and athletic woman slowly begins to lose the will to live? What's causing the pain that finds her trapped and making a choice between life and death? When you grew up, the roots of this maybe had already been sort of planted. For instance, your mother was insistent that you vacuum the rug in straight lines. Yes? yes. That you polish the leaves of plants. Yes. That's normal. If you put the whole package together... It's not her fault. But let me tell you what I observed. I observed that your daughter identified certain behaviors about her childhood and your interaction with her that may have contributed to her sense that she needed to be perfect and very structured and controlled. I just was raised with a very strong work ethic and I guess I brought it into the, the no, household. No, I'm not blaming you. But to tell me I was raised with a work ethic so I had my daughter clean the leaves of the plant. Uh, no. So tell me your right. story. The real story? The real story. It's the only thing that'll help. They had a father that was there but was not present emotionally, and uh, he drank. So um, I tried to be more perfect, thinking maybe if I was more perfect, that things would get better.
but I never knew it would have that effect. Sorry. What are you thinking right now? I feel horrible. It wasn't your fault. It's not her fault that her little girl is suffering now. It's a multi-generational story. I gotta come take you up here and have you hold your girl. There's still more ahead with Dr. Keith Ablo. Are you struggling with emotional issues? If you want help with problems in your life, go to drkeithtv.com or call 1-888-DR-KEITH. I'm Dr. Keith Ablo. Please join me for my new show where getting to the truth in people's lives will lead to happier, healthier tomorrows for my guests and for you. What if you knew the fastest way to make a better Hawaii is to improve the lives of women and girls? The Women's Fund of Hawaii helps move women and girls away from poverty, away from drug and sexual abuse, away from homelessness, and away from other hopeless situations. The Women's Fund of Hawaii also empowers women and girls, helping them become financially secure and contributing members of our communities. Please join our growing group of women helping women, because when women thrive, families and communities prosper. Did you vote in Hawaii's primary election? Every vote counts, and every viewer who watched KHNL News 8 got the best election night coverage. With political experts and party pundits supporting the KHNL News 8 team, you got the most live, local, late-breaking coverage. Plus, KHNL.com kept you on target with live streaming and voting results. Stay with KHNL News 8's Decision 2006 for the most comprehensive coverage leading up to Hawaii's general election. And remember to vote on November 7th. NBC Monday, America's new night for great television, starting with an all-new episode of Deal or No Deal. <laughs> then, it's the new sensation heroes, ordinary people discovering extraordinary abilities. We are all connected. And on the critically acclaimed Studio 60, when the lights go out, the real trouble begins. What are you staring at? My mugshot. All new Deal or No Deal, followed by Heroes and Studio 60. What a Monday on NBC. I was supposed to propose, like, postponing sex. So you're still not getting it exactly right? No. Because I didn't okay. say to say, we're going to postpone. These are, these are bad words. You have to say, we're going to have sex. We're not going to have sex today, but we are going to have sex in two to three months. And listen to me. Here's what's going to happen. Now, can you say that to me? I'm just going to enjoy this for a second. Hold on. What are you saying? This is what psychiatry is? I love this job. I think of myself as a catalyst to help people confront the truth about their lives. I definitely thought she was having an affair. Um, I think she's been lying me, to me from day one. Does she love you? I have no idea. Well, I, I love you. The point is this. this you're, you're, you're finally with somebody who loves you. She's lying. Do you know why this is real? It's about your lives and the lives of your children. Do you love her? Yeah, I love her with all my heart. But I don't like what you There's guys no are. I, I, I disagree with okay, what you, you guys. Don't like what we I did, disagree with you what you're doing what you're on the show, you, and that's why I'm getting off the show. You should stay, Paul. Thank you, Paul. You should Thank stay. You. It's very hard for people to tell the truth about themselves. It's a real journey. It requires courage, and I know that. Paul, it's been 24 hours since you walked off my stage. What were you thinking? What was happening for you when, when, when that happened? I was so overwhelmed, and I think you really touched on all my issues. We found a part of your story that you may be replaying now. In other words, whenever I work with someone and I come close to the pain they experienced in childhood, it's overwhelming. What you can expect is an absolute dedication to help people with kindness, get to the truth about their existences and with love. There's the times when we're like together and it's like so hard and difficult, but there's these times when I see him that he's beautiful. He's, he's like, he's caring. He's such a loving father and he tries so hard. And when somebody tells you that she loves you unconditionally, mm -hmm. which is what she just did, she said, I want to stay with him, raise my family with him, because there are moments when I look at him, and I think there's not a more beautiful person on the face of the earth. Well, thank you. You're welcome. That's a love story. 
Anybody who tells you that they had the perfect relationship from day one, don't believe them. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's always a journey like yours. If you heal one another, mm -hmm. that's a blow away 10 out of 10 love story. That's one to tell your kids. We'll be right back. People who watch this show and watch it again and again are gonna be doing so for one reason. They're going to get familiar with people in a very intimate way. The key to this show is that people are going to say, I can feel that individual's truth. I now understand that person. I want that for my life. I want to be understood and I want to understand the people I say I love. That's all we have to give people and we intend to. The Dr. Keith Ablo Show premieres this fall. Starting September 11th, make an appointment with Dr. Keith Adler. Central on NBC. You're watching K5 The Home Team. Left filling. Hey, Sono! The following program.